Let's Podcast alongside Joe Giglio. I'm Joe Ovias inside the Eford Studios, downtown Raleigh. Thanks to Empire Properties and thanks to Copiers Plus. We're, we're definitely getting into the time of the year of, you know what, Joe? That sounds like a like an after Thanksgiving problem. Uh, you know what, Joe? That sounds like an after, that sounds like a 2024 yeah, problem. We'll, we'll get that next year. So one of the things you definitely have to put on your to-do list for next year is to get your print cost management to a very, be a much better level than it is right now. Or finally get with the times and get your document management to the cloud. And that's what Copiers Plus can do for you. So again, check them out at copiers-plus.com. Today is a Thanksgiving super show. This is our last show of the week. So we're doing a little bit extra here. You might be on the road traveling for, you might be on the road traveling to visit family and everything else. So we're going to get the big super show here for you. A little bit of a programming note as well. We will be doing a live OG after dark following the NC State Carolina game. It's an eight o'clock kickoff. We will be at the breeze through on Trinity Road. Look, Joe, when it's Carolina week, Carolina State week, you gotta break you gotta break everything out. Like this hardcore band that played at local <sighs> 506, the mosh pit, <laughs> but make it North Carolina style with life's questions hardcore. Let's listen to this. Duke is puke, work is fake, NC State's the one I hate. By the way, the mosh pit. The guys in the mosh pits that are flailing their arms around. No, y'all. That's no, that's dangerous. It look like it hurt. Like no, that's dangerous. Rotator cuff it's, or something. It's just, just, just bump into people. No need to be flailing their arms around. All right. Now it's been a long time since I've been in a pit. Too old for that shit now. But. <laughs> You good? I'm too old for that shit now. Like when I went to go see Rage Against the Machine at PNC Arena with Caleb, we were in the 200 level, and I said, "All right, man, you want to be entertained? Go look at the down, look at look at the floor, and watch these guys just like a lot of these guys are probably my age, thinking that yeah, man, I still got it. I want to talk to them the next day because I bet you they were sore as hell. When I went to go see Metallica at Ford Field, they had the Snake Pit." Same thing was going on, but man, if you if you're at a Metallica show in 2023, you're probably up there in age 40s and 50s. You had to be feeling it the next day. But Carolina, NC State, we got things started yesterday, Joe, at PNC Arena. A little club hockey we last did. night. That was we a lot did. of fun for the Governor's Cup, which North Carolina pulled it yeah. out. It was a very entertaining game. I'm mad at Roy Cooper. He came out ceremonial puck yeah. drop, yeah, yeah, wearing yeah. like the official like governor's like leisure jacket. And mm -hmm. I'm like, Roy, come on, man. Come out with the Tez Walker jersey. Just do it. <laughs> Go full heel, man. Go full Randy Macho Man Savage look, heel turn. And look, just, here's the thing, man. I, I I I don't know any of the players on either of the teams, right? And we've had Tim Healy on. He challenged Carolina fans they to show there. up. They were, they were there. there. Love to see it. It's a good crowd in the lower bowl. It was that entertaining game there at the end? You know what else I found refreshing about that game last night? No replay. The thing that I didn't like. <laughs> no replay. <laughs> You know, there were a couple questionable yeah. goals, okay? <laughs> like, I, I seeing it on the screen, uh, what would have been the tying goal initially, I thought was sought by Carolina's goalie, who was fantastic yeah, all night. Good. Uh, I think the skate got it before it crossed the line, but you can't replay it. Sure. I'm like, all right, the call was the call. And they discussed it, and they moved on. And then when NC State did score, I think they got it back because I'm pretty sure they were offside. But they didn't call it. No replay. And then, of course, there was the final goal sequence, the dagger, uh, where... It looked like NC State's goalie had pushed the goal out of the mooring. Mm -hmm. uh, and that obviously is going to be an automatic goal uh, at that point. And I think you had tweeted this last night about like the skill level, obviously, for club hockey is not what you typically see at PNC Arena. Right. But that doesn't take away from a pretty entertaining atmosphere with the pet bands on both yeah. sides of the building. It was I did a great like time. the bands. It was a great and, time. And it was a great crowd. Yeah, the only thing that disappointed me was was Cooper not uh, I know. leaning in to his I double know. tar heel healed him. Before we got started, we were talking about the skill level on display. And I... I mentioned this too, and I think it's worth repeating where, you know, look, how many hockey games have we been going to since the Canes got here? I actually think that's the first time I've ever seen a hockey game that wasn't an NHL game. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what I discovered in watching my younger son play youth hockey, whether at the house league or now with junior Canes, is that I've actually learned more watching him play and his teams play at that speed so that now when I go back to a Carolina Hurricanes game, not that I didn't know what was going on. 
It's just I have a greater appreciation oh. for watching things develop. And obviously, the speed. The, also, the way they control the puck at that speed. Yes. <laughs> Something yeah, else. It's incredible. It nah, is incredible. It, it was a good night. But uh, I know we still don't have a breaking news sounder. No, I, I feel we like don't. I'm going to add a Steve Austin breaking glass or something we to probably our probably should. Soundboard, mm -hmm. we could definitely do that. It's but, I, got, I got back home and I watched the second half of the Kansas City-Philadelphia game, which mm -hmm. we can discuss here in a little bit. But as we started to hit record on today's podcast, we got some breaking news. It mm -hmm. happened, Joe. Mm -hmm. It actually happened. And, and now I'm going to share with you the best tweet I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Look on your screen on the YouTubes. Oh, we're watching. <laughs> I'm going to print that out and put it behind me. Are you going to do that? Or are you going to... I don't have the ability to pull it up. Um, on the thing, but here's our here's our group text with Brooke Pryor, who covers the Steelers for ESPN. It's probably all blurry here, but it reads, Merry Christmas, Jillio. <laughs> you were right. Do you want me to screen grab this and print it out and put it behind you? Yes. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll do that. Although, she jumped a holiday there, so. Oh, that's true. <laughs> she didn't respect the bird. Got to respect the bird. But yeah, Matt Canada finally got fired. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm actually mad at the Steelers. Why? A man's got to live by a code. They never they, fired. They've had a hundred year history where they don't fire people in mid-season. And yeah. now all of a sudden, that's how bad Matt Canada is. He made the Steelers mm -hmm. break their own code, man. But you know what this means, right? I do. He's now in play for both the Patriots job and the Panthers job. But they oh, did him a favor. Panthers fans, you thought it couldn't get any worse than Matt Rule? Ah, you got Frank Reich. Oh, and Frank Reich's not working <laughs> out. This, you know, the adult in the room, and it looks like he's going to get fired. It can't get any worse than this, right? They've reached drop, bot, drop, um, Rock bottom, I can speak. No, it can always get worse. And maybe Matt Canada, this predictable Boy, play, has come to Bryce Young. I can't wait to see where he ends up. Because you know it's going to be somewhere good. Maybe he'll, uh, when maybe. Dave Dorn takes the Michigan State job, he'll be the NC State head coach. Maybe he'll be president next year. Maybe we're thinking too small. <laughs> I wonder what finally broke the Steelers to fire Matt Cannon. Well, I saw the Dan Orlovsky tweet yesterday, like breaking down a particular play mm -hmm. that was like classic Matt Canada. There was motion involved. It's, it was a play to nowhere. There was no blockers. I think you had retweeted <laughs> this where it's funny to watch in real time. People come to yeah. this realization yeah. that Matt Canada I'm not a hater. He not. just does the same things over and over. Again. So here we are. And you're like, why? What are yeah. you doing? It's pretty funny. It is pretty funny. So I did you watch any of the Monday night game last night? I did not. When I was at the hockey, I did see that uh speaking of uh NC State, great NC State moments in Pac Pros, Marquez Valdez Scantling dropped the would be game winning touchdown pass. Huh. Yeah, Weird. a fifty Weird. a fifty one yard pass that would have uh, that would have been the difference. But it doesn't go beyond him. I mean, um, no. Patrick Mahomes threw a pick. Uh you also had Travis Kelsey lose a fumble, which did they miss Tariq? Oh. No, they missed Taylor Swift. <sighs> That's oh, did she not go? No, she's doing her tour. The families were oh. there. But when Taylor Swift's in the building, all, all Travis Kelsey is doing is giving further credence to the idea that when Swift's in the building, he balls out. The when mojo. she's not there, the witch magic goes away okay. and he has things like he fumbles. But I'll say this because I was, I was kind of getting some reaction to last night and it speaks to a larger problem in the NFL. It looked like the Chiefs were going to do the thing that they've been doing all year and showing you they can win with their defense. And they did a really great job of snuffing out the Eagles. The problem with the Chiefs, though, is that when they need to get more points, especially in the second half, I didn't realize this stat until I saw it last night. They're averaging 5.9 points a game in the second half. Their offense just goes away in the second half. And while Patrick Mahomes still is a threat and they still have guys like Travis Kelsey and everything else, they can still, and there are some incredible throws that Patrick Mahomes can still make. Their offense, for whatever reason, you want to say it's Tyreek Hill. Maybe it's that some of the guys they thought were going to step up haven't stepped up. There, there's that one little missing piece. And then on the Eagles, there's this, well, they didn't look like they dominated. They still found a weird way to win. Have you been paying attention to the NFL all season? Yeah. So to your point with Matt Canada, it's been funny to see people in real time come around to Matt Canada. I think this week, people finally got to the realization of entirely in the NFL, not just uh, early observers. 
that if you're going to win the Super Bowl this year, you're going to have to find other ways to do it. There is no dominant team. Right. You like to talk about the monster. Yeah. There is no monster in the NFL this year. Br bracket luck is real. But I still do, do think, you avoid? But I still do think that the Eagles and the Chiefs, of all the teams, and not just because of their records, they still have something, whether it's the, the brotherly shove or just straight up having Patrick Mahomes with your Kansas City. Those are the things that still, I think, give you an edge to get to a rematch of the Super Bowl. I'm also kind of surprised that ABC had that game last night. That's not a Monday night football game in the modern era, man. A Super yeah. Bowl rematch like that between yeah. these two teams that could see each other again? That's a Sunday night football game. So I was a little thrown off that it was on Monday night football, but apparently I'd, I'd forgotten in the contract the Monday night football package actually features flex scheduling. So they're going to see some things uh, as we get down to the end of the season. And then another note about the NFL, as I'm watching this all last night and understanding that from the second half on and understanding the totality of the season, it hasn't been a great NFL season, but there's a bunch of reasons for that. Injuries at the quarterback position have been the biggest storyline this year. You're going to have to win ugly, but somewhere along the lines, how old is, how old is Tom Brady, Joe? Is he 45? He's our age. Okay. But when did Tom Brady become old? He got uh, old quick. He was on with Stephen A. Smith. And he said, there's a lot of mediocrity in the NFL today. Here's the, here's the clip. I, I think there's a lot of mediocrity in today's NFL. Yeah. I don't see the excellence that I saw in the past. Why not? And hope, Why not? I think the coaching isn't as, as good as it was. I don't think the development of young players is as good as it was. The rules have allowed a lot of bad habits to get into the actual performance of the game. Mm -hmm. So I just think the product, in my opinion, is less than what it's been. I think I look at a lot of players like Ray Lewis and Rodney Harrison and Ronnie Lott and guys that impacted the game in, in a certain way. And every hit they would have made would have been a penalty. Mm. You hear coaches complaining about their own player being tackled and not necessarily... Why don't they talk to their player about how to protect themselves? We used to work on the fundamentals of those things all the time. Now they're trying to be regulated all the time. Offensive players need to protect themselves. It's not up to a defensive player to protect the offensive player. A defensive player needs to protect himself. I didn't throw the ball to certain areas because I was afraid players were going to get knocked out. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. Wow. I didn't throw it to the middle when I played Ray Lewis because you knock him out of the game and I couldn't afford to lose a good... Do you... <laughs> Do you find it ironic? I can't believe that the shards of glass didn't just fall and break <laughs> and kill him instantaneously. Is 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 the is the disassociation that I just experienced with that Tom Brady clip not was that a deep fake? Potentially. <laughs> because I don't know what to believe on the internet anymore. Yeah. <laughs> T T Stephen A. Smith wasn't talking to an AI construct of Tom Brady, was he? Could have been. T T Tom Brady just didn't sit there talking about, you need to understand how to protect yourself. You know, like talk to the officials and make sure that anytime somebody breathed on me, that it was a flag. Hard to believe. Come Tom. Hard to believe. Like, that is some, dude, you're 45. You're not a boomer. You're not, you're not here talking about how you had to go to school uphill in the snow both ways. That's what that was. But that's what that was. <laughs> Barefoot. Dude, Tom, that's disappointing. That's really disappointing to see from Tom Brady, man. It really, really is. I hate to see it. Housekeeping. As I mentioned, it's the Thanksgiving Super Show, and that means that we've got holiday deals all over the place online, which I might have to remind you, head on over to BreakingTea.com. Go to BreakingTea.com slash OG to find our merch. They're having a hoodie sale, 20% off hoodies. And if you go and uh, turn yourself into a VIP at Breaking Tea, you can save even more money. Yeah, big savings. They have an awesome collection of Carolina Hurricanes gear, uh, whether it's like the Brent Burns, the bunch of jerk shirts that still get sold. We have our bad for ratings tea. Uh, so head on over to BreakingTea.com. If you want our merch, go to BreakingTea.com slash OG. Take advantage of that hoodie sale because they got really comfortable hoodies uh, over at Breaking Tea. And as we mentioned at the start of the show, we are going to be over at Breeze Through on Saturday. Actually uh, talked with Adam yesterday to get the logistics of where we're going to be. We're going to be outside. We're not going to be in the beer cave. Good. In the parking lot after the game, drop on by. We'll have the camera ready to go. I am debating whether or not we send out the stream yard link for anybody to pop on. It could be massive chaos. Okay. You down with the chaos? Yeah. That we might be drunk enough that it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Just want to put that or out we, there. We didn't last time where we did it live when the YouTube comments showed up in real time. So. I want no 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 no. I want people to jump on oh, the stream. Oh. 
Ooh, not oh. the YouTube comments. Different. I, like I'm going to tweet out or put on threads. Maybe I make it a threads exclusive. Get okay. on threads. Here's the StreamYard link. Pop on and you can have a take on the football game. Okay. But in the meantime, it's an eight o'clock game. You got to stay hydrated. Yeah, you also need to stay awake. So get the dark roast coffee. So go on over to Breeze Through and check that out. If you find yourself getting in trouble, you contact Whitaker and Hamer after the fact. Yep. They're, as we speak, representing me in, in Wake County Court <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> Just do what I did. Go to wh.lawyer, the world's greatest URL. Uh, traffic issues, uh, family law issues. Maybe you're closing on a house. Maybe you're selling a business, mm -hmm. right? All those things, any kind of contract help, they've got it. Josh Whitaker, Joe Hamer, no, would not be a happy Thanksgiving without them. So, and of course, every time we talk about football, the NFL, the Carolina Panthers is brought to you by Graffiti. Go check them out in downtown Cary. Uh, maybe you don't really care about watching football. No big deal. It is Thanksgiving week. You're probably going to have family in town. You got to get them the hell out of the house. You know a good way to entertain your guests? Go watch some games. Go throw some axes. Axe throwing. Yeah. Axe throwing. You got some aggression because your father-in-law has been just being annoying this entire weekend. Go to graffiti. Throw some axes at the wall while enjoying some great bourbon. That is graffiti for you. So again, check them out. At the downtown. wall. The at the there. wall. At the wall. So head on over to graffiti in downtown care. Wes Durham, ACC Network, ESPN, in studio with us. I gotta tell you, boys, I'm awfully proud. Yeah? I'm awfully proud. First of all, the memorabilia, <laughs> some of the some of the little known artifacts yeah. behind you guys are you, awesome. You can't have the clock. No, the clock as much is, as I want the clock. The clock as much as I remember the turtle crawling on the ground, Maryland yeah. logo, yeah. The South Carolina, and the devil with the pitchfork, which Duke will never bring back. They'll bring back strong forearm Duke man. Yeah. They'll bring back, you know. The Duke script. Yeah, the they're never, now. they're never, Spur your Duke. they're never bringing this guy back. No, that guy's never, that guy's coming, never back, coming back. And that guy behind you on the clock is never coming. But can I be serious for one second before he gets into Duke? Do you want, you want to drink the soda tonight? Absolutely no chance. You know what's funny about oh, this? It looks like a Carolina right. soda in a Duke box. <laughs> Isn't that kind of weird? Well, that's what happens when you hold it for what is it, 32 years. <laughs> <laughs> Joe told me not to jerk this, so I'm no, just going to no, put it I back on the wall. Not against that. Yeah. 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 Just leave it back there. Okay, fine. Got fine. some health and safety measures at OGV, don't we? All right. So when you and Brian Ives sat down this offseason to write the script for the <laughs> ACC. <laughs> well, first of all, I love Brian. He's great. <laughs> But every once in a while, I'll say something to Brian in reference to something about the ACC. Yeah. And then I got to remember, ah, okay, Wes, he didn't remember that. Yeah, he's a young he guy. He wasn't born then. Yeah, he was a so, young guy. Anyway, but yeah, Brian. Yeah, but you guys wrote the script out for the season. And I look, man. How did we write it out? Hats, Tell me about that. Hats off to y'all. Because, you know, you know how it gets after a while. It's like the same boring thing all over. Oh, here's Clemson winning it again. Oh, here we go. But this business with this business between state and carolina on saturday both eight win teams i mean that's bravo well, bravo let me, man let me say this <laughs> uh, you're calling the game i mean i know you wrote this out well yeah and, and <laughs> don't you know it's all over social media already that what is, what is boy here we go with what is boy well, and you know that's just one of the kind of funny lines to the whole piece um <laughs> I had a person from ESPN who's been at the company a long time and worked in television a long time mm -hmm. uh, share a story with someone on our crew about our package, the primetime package, where we have invented chaos now. You have. I mean, remember, we had Georgia Tech, Miami set a bar. I know. We had a know. double overtime, Appalachian, Carolina. Mm -hmm. We have had Clemson, Miami overtime. We've had Carolina, Duke overtime. We've also had Georgia Tech, Carolina, where Georgia Tech ran for some insane amount of yards in the fourth. In the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, we have had Virginia Tech, Old Dominion, with Old Dominion driving to open the second half to start the season and then fumbling, or else they would have taken the lead. And now all of a sudden, it just feels right that we get Georgia Tech, Syracuse, the double sixes for bowl eligibility. And now 
we get State Carolina on a Saturday night where, you know, now Julio's going to tell me I'm crazy, but I think Dave's done one of his best jobs coaching. No, I think we're all in agreement on that one. I said that's I mean, because I know how you feel about 20. Yes. Um, I have a special spot for 20. You do, and, and rightly so. But I think he's done a marvelous job. And here's Carolina, Drake May's last regular season game. Um, you know, all the things that Carolina was a month ago, a month and a half ago, that now are not available to them, championship game, CFP, whatever, to now have it come down to a rivalry, and, and forgive me here, I know I'm preaching to the choir a little yeah. bit. This football rivalry does not get anywhere near the run it deserves. This rivalry is a different rivalry than just about any other rivalry in the ACC. I No, I agree. They are essentially the same programs. How they get to this point is different, obviously. Sure. But they are essentially two historically 500 programs. That's probably why it doesn't get a lot of run. There's no trophy that goes along That's with it. That's the other part. Um, people, There's nothing people outside this market can buy. Well, they're playing for, for the whatever, teams. right? I mean, even Clemson and State have you know the textile bowl and all that kind right. of stuff. Uh, I mean, and, Boston and, College and Clemson have a leather helmet, they, whatever. And right. Duke and Duke and Carolina in basketball has kind of taken all the air out of the room when they think about but, rivalry. But in yeah. football. In fo- and really with other sports between State and Carolina. No question. This is, I mean, as we started the show, Joe and I were at BNC Arena last night for a hockey, a club hockey game between the Wolfpack and the Tar Heels. Lower Bowl was pretty much full. Yeah, I mean, 10,000 people. Yeah, yeah, easily. I mean, there was probably more people there to watch that game than an, 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 a, a non-conference NC State basketball game. Right. And it was heated because... It's State Carolina. It's State Carolina in that regard. And, and I will say this, a couple things. One... <laughs> When I got into television and was fortunate enough to be a part of the ACC package with Fox and then Raycom, and yeah. now obviously ESPN the last five years, part of me, given my background and history of growing up around this league, right, mm-hmm. is I feel, and fortunately I have a producer in our primetime package, Alex Formartino, who also is from the Raycom background, mm-hmm. we kind of feel the fiduciary responsibility to talk about the history of these rivalries and the intensity of the rivalries and things like that. We did it with Duke Carolina. Yeah. We're gonna do it with State Carolina on Saturday night as part of the primetime package because I want people outside this footprint, the immediate footprint and the league footprint to understand this this league has great football history to it and it has intensity to it that sometimes, and you guys I think would agree, doesn't get its run nationally. There are years when this game's played and it feels like the end of something. This, you know, no, I'm not, and I'm not, this is not a Mac thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You said Drake Bang's last regular season game. Buddy, somebody in Drake's family needs to tell him not to play in the bowl game. I mean, you're going to be in the Copper Bowl and you're going to go risk four, 35 Yeah, that's, pro- that's probably it's not going to happen. It's not just Drake Come Bang's on, last man. regular season game. I would say this. You got Peyton Wilson's last regular season. Mm -hmm. Who might, in my opinion, is the defensive player of the year in the ACC. Should be. And we know how that goes sometimes. But you got Peyton Wilson's last game. Right. You got Drake May's last game. I don't know what's going to happen with Mac Brown. I don't know what's going to happen with Dave Dorn. That's correct, too. If State wins this game, Mm -hmm. they go 9 3. You said his best work. How is Michigan State not impressed with that? How is Michigan State with one of the dumbest under uh, reported scandals, like in in all yeah. of the scandals, because we just shrug now. We're too we're, we're too we're too busy like, with Jim Harbaugh in like, Michigan. That's pardon my French here, but how fucking stupid is Mel Tucker? Oh. You're gonna you're gonna go after Brenda Tracy? Oh, yeah. Like you're stupid. Yeah. So if you're Michigan State, the number one thing you do is go get the cleanest, safest, soundest, hard, tough together guy you can come up with. Mm, right. That's Dave Doran. But are you kidding me? But Joe, you and I both know Dave well enough to know that may not be and, Dave's and, and that might not not be what he that wants to do, and I get that. He's got security. But yeah. you look at this oh. game, you look at this game, right. and it feels like it's the polar opposite of 06 to me, because 06, oh, yeah. we knew Chuck, we knew Bunning was gone. Yeah, He was playing out the string, yep. right? And he was messing but, with Chuck, too. But we didn't know Chuck would be gone. <laughs> no, we didn't you know, know And it was like this whole reset. Happy Thanksgiving! It was a, a happy Thanksgiving! It was a whole reset yeah. after that game. Right. And I think we're in a, and, and now you add in adding Cal and 
Stanford. It feels like the that's the thing. Is changing. That's the thing. Add in um, who don't forget knows? SMU. <laughs> yeah, don't forget they're going to be pretty good. Yeah, and, you, and their money wants you, you to remember. Add in how the um, the playoff is changing. You know, and, and you can roll your eyes a little bit at some of this, but in in some of these years past, State and Carolina actually could be in a position Absolutely. to make a playoff. Right. So as we talk about their, the the lack of stakes for this game, how sad is it that Carolina hasn't won the ACC since 1980? NC State hasn't, hasn't won the league since 1979. Right? And, and they yeah. lost to Carolina that year, by the way. So it's like you, you have this very odd rivalry where you know these two teams, and, and this is not um, a fan creation. The Carolina side does not like the, the Mac Brown camp and, and no. the people who work over there. They don't like Dave. And Dave, as we learned last year, uh, does not like <laughs> them. Hearsay does not like them. No. So, and then you had the flag planning last uh-huh. year. You know, there's a there's a lot going into oh, this yeah. game. There's fish belts. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on, and it's a Saturday night. As you said, you guys have seen some crazy shit all year. I expect I expect this thing to be wild I mean, on Saturday. Yeah. I don't know if we're getting a Donnie Thompson brawl before the which, game, or which is we have that video in the pregame. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I don't know nice. what we're getting in this one. I, well, look, the, the, we're not gonna get. I know we're not gonna get a John Bunting standing there uh, while they are quote unquote praying and Chuck Amato is mad and looking up to him yelling at him you people um, <laughs> it's so crazy that we are going to be at the breeze through on Trinity Road after the game doing an OG Shout after dark you gonna you want to walk over I got the Julio Dark Rose pump. you probably got to hop on a plane for a football game don't you uh, early oh. Sunday morning would be the answer yeah, yeah. Oh, so you, got you got time drop on by the breeze through <laughs> we'll be we'll be Joe, posted up in the parking Joe, lot Joe who, uh, <laughs> who when I was there for the Miami game and Hasselbeck and I are walking back to seemingly Apex. Yeah. No talk, boy. Talking to you and C State about your parking for your talent. Um, Are you the fairgrounds uh, log? Uh, we're we worse. Across, we were across no, wait, Trinity no, Road. Wait a second. And down the wait hill. Wait a second. The preferred partner hasn't learned the trick of just bringing in a, uh, a company car with the logo on the side. You get to park right behind Dave's car. For some. For some. <laughs> wait a second. For some cruise. For some cruise. Oh, days. wow. Yeah. Oh. So okay. Anyway, anyway okay. Julio with his rolling refreshment stand. Of course. Uh, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> I was relatively sober at that point, too. Yeah. You were doing well. And it was a big win that night. And what would be MJ Morris's final game, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The Miami game. <laughs> then there's that. What an era. Right. Brennan Armstrong would like I was gonna say, to light up Carolina's secondary. Team, well, that's the, the other thing too. If you looked at Brennan Armstrong against Carolina numbers, by the way, yeah, okay, yeah, I have seen. Well, like, let's let's actually talk about the game then. Um, Joe and I talked about this on Monday about confidence. Okay. If you if you're looking at a team that actually looks like they have the confidence to go in there and win, deal with a little bit of adversity. The easy answer is NC State. Sure. Well, I and I know it's trying to get into the psyche of college football kids, and it's tough. But I do wonder. What happened at the midway point of this season for Carolina to go from 6-0, and looking like one of the more complete teams in the ACC, if not the country, uh, a legitimate chance, based on their schedule, to at least flirt with the college football playoff discussion, right. to a team that just doesn't look – they're just waiting. They're waiting for something bad to happen. And I don't know what what I mean. One game is a thing. Fine, you have a it's college football. You see sure. fluky stuff all the time. And yeah, okay, fine. Virginia just straight up beat you. I didn't think they doubled down with another game like they did Georgia Tech the following yeah, week or the fourth quarter continued fourth quarter defensive issues that we saw against Duke and where they are offensively right now to make that a, a track meet that goes into overtime. I'm just very confused as to how UNC got to this place. Well, Julio might feel different about this, but I think it has to do with depth and reality Mm -hmm. because the depth they have defensively I think they played some guys who have developed I would tell you like Stick Lane has come on and he's you know he's been a factor in the long term of the season defensively right yeah the second part for me is that it's not just like that particular player but let's also take into account too, and this is where Julio probably agrees with me. You've had Gray, Eccles, and Rucker on the field entirely too much at times over game to game. Like for instance, I don't think I think Gray 
at Power Eccles, if the analytics and some of the numbers that uh, that we have access to are right from True Media, those guys have been on the field, yeah, like in the top three, not just in the ACC, but like in the top ten nationally in terms of snaps. They can't get off, but some of that is their own doing in that they extend drives with some procedural penalties, no question, or about some now, silly the, penalties. You know, things, yeah, yeah, all the ancillary things aside, the those guys in particular, I thought Georgia Tech was a direct result of that. Okay. Because you played a ton of plays against Virginia and Georgia Tech was able to manipulate the game. I see, I talked about I know that your I, 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 I know that your teammate Hasselbeck was bringing up the fact that Carolina looked gassed. They no, bit. I didn't say gassed. I was thinking about just the ability from game to game. Okay. Not that particular okay. night, I'm talking about game to game. Okay, because on that particular night, the reason why I was pushing back on that was because North Carolina's offense was on the field most of the third quarter. Well, Carolina's offense was also on the field most of the first half because yeah. Warren Hampton was running for nearly 100 yards in the first half. Right. So that all being said, I think that's part of it. Second part of it is this, too. You know, say what you will, there is the time and place where the worst thing for Carolina's defense is a three and out because how how their offense operates. Sure. Julia, you agree with that? Because if they tempo it up for three downs and they don't get a first down or it's a five-play drive or it's a three-play drive, all of a sudden the defense who just played seven, eight, nine plays is back out there for nine, ten more. Mm-hmm. It's the congruency of that. And we and Carolina's not alone in that club, by the way. Sure. There are a lot of people who fell victim of that over the course of the season who fall victim of it. You don't have a lot of depth defensively. You end up playing a team that tempos you and your offense. Look, when we hear the term complimentary football, people wave it off as coach speak. But there is some reality to complimentary football. Mm -hmm. It's the ability of a high-speed offense to change gears. It's also the ability of a defensive unit to set the table for the offense. And Carolina does not quite have that connection, in my opinion. Doesn't mean that they're not, you know, their record is dismissive. I don't think so. They've had a really good year. Mm-hmm. Not the year they'd hoped. Um, but I look at NC State and I see a team that's playing complimentary football in the last month. Yeah. And I, I, I you know, to oversimplify this thing, I, I just, I look at Carolina football and I say to myself, who on that team is standing up and saying, we're not going to lose today? I think you, Peyton Wilson's the answer at NC State, and I think you see that leadership and how it gets manifested from don't boo Brandon Armstrong, people, oh, yeah. to everything else that he's done to to will that defense. Because quite frankly, at the beginning of the year, State's defense wasn't good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you you see that change. And again, it's over. It's an oversimplification. But when I look at Carolina, I don't see. And I think Drake May should be the number one pick in the NFL draft. I think he will be the number. I one think pick in the draft I, honestly, I think it. he will be. But I, I still don't even see him standing up and saying, we're not losing today. Yeah. That's not what's happening. And we could sit here and have a draft of 20 Carolina basketball players in the last 30 years who we would go, yep, Marcus Page wouldn't let that happen. Joel Berry, yep, Joel Berry would never let that happen. Antoine Jameson, never let that happen. Tyler Hansberg. Tyler, Psycho T, yeah. never let that happen. Like We could sit here and, and come up with, we could have a draft. with, with dogs, right? <laughs> I, look, oh, yeah. I look at this Carolina team, and, and it goes back to that Virginia game. You're up 10 in the fourth quarter with three different chances now to score to win the football game and not one of them even sniffs the the, the, the end zone. It is the and you're going college. and you're going, guys, somebody has to stand up and say, it ain't happening on my watch today. Right. It and would that, be it would be Omari and Hampton, but that then gets into the hampering. He's too, young. He's too well it but the thing is like let's look at the Clemson game. He had two fumbles but he still found a way to yeah. get his yards. 100, 178 yards in that game uh in the Time loss Molly Gordon for the next and look, man, it's football stupid. I mentioned this on Monday. Football stupid sometimes. He hasn't fumbled all season long. And he has two of them. One of them was like a legitimate, like that's a Clemson play. Right. I mean, straight up. You can't do anything about that. But this gets into the this into your identity question is what, what that, and that's what I was that was what I was getting at. Yeah. What as they as they they brought Chip Lindsay on to be the offensive Ooh, coordinator. I think he's done a really good job, by the way. I think he's done a fine job. Yeah. But part of the reason why he was there to give Carolina a different identity going into this season, knowing full damn well what they had in Drake May for one last year. So, has it worked? Is that is that what their identity is? Right. Joe, from an offensive perspective, you what have is it? to say it's worked. Because they have a they have a guy. They have what we 
we're regarding as potentially the top pick in the draft. I agree. They also have one of the nation's leading rushers. Mm-hmm. Holly Gordon of Oklahoma State and Omar and Hampton are dead even. In yes. Them. So they're putting up numbers. Yeah, they're putting up numbers. They have had a little mix and match in the offensive line, which is to be expected. The scenario, I think, with Carolina is they've also integrated a game-changing wide receiver as the year's gone on. Mm-hmm. Now, some of that was bumpy, in my opinion. I don't know that they would tell you that, but I think it was bumpy if you go back and look game to game with numbers and the way the ball was spread around the field and things like that. Now they've come back to the Bryson Nesbitts, they've come back to the Kamari Morales and the Copenhavers from a tight end perspective. And I joke with Chip because I knew Chip when he was at Laster High School. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know everybody. I, I told Chip, I said, you know, there are a lot of people that didn't want you to get this job because they didn't think you'd throw the ball in the tight end. He started laughing. He said, yeah, I kind of had that reputation. Sure. But he's found tight ends. He's also JJ. Jones makes a big catch the other day. Mm -hmm. Okay, So it's not just throw the ball on the go route, the nine. And I think they went through that kind of pivot with their offense. It comes back to NC State on Saturday night, Carolina has to win, in my opinion, Carolina has to win in the front. It's a game that's determined by sure. Carolina's defensive front and NC State's offensive front. <laughs> Which, Which I think always comes down to. And yeah. I think the Wolfpack the has gotten a lot better in the offensive line. They have. And their inability, perceived inability to run the football, Robert and I has found ways to put 10 yeah. in the spotlight. So here's, here's where I was going with Carolina. Offensively, I think they obviously have it figured out. I don't. I, I here's my thing though about Carolina. Here's a fun stat from here's a fun stat from Greg Barnes over at Inside Carolina. UNC has lost fourteen. Greg yeah. He, UNC has lost fourteen of their last fifteen games when scoring less than thirty one points. That's correct. You can't live that life. All right. You you simply cannot live Not that life. Unless you're in the Mountain West. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but here's the difference. You know, Carolina. Ten, Carolina is what people thought Southern Cal would ultimately be. Right. It was going to be all offense and unserious on defense. Carolina wants to be serious on defense. Sure. Like Southern Cal is they don't they don't like Lincoln Riley's kind of been exposed a little bit at Southern Cal with the way the season has played out because there's no real commitment. There's never been a commitment to defense. Southern Cal's playing seven on seven at yeah, man. <laughs> Carolina actually tries. They try on defense, but they still cannot get right. They keep making those mistakes. They thought they had things corrected when they were six and oh yet now they find themselves giving up those catastrophic plays as Gene Chizik. Like, I can't imagine Gene Chizik coming back after this year. That's not what this year was supposed to be about. I, I don't know where... What a great mind trick that Mac has pulled. What, in what no, sense? He's yeah. not responsible for the defense. No, he's not. Their defense sucks out loud, but yeah, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. Like, I, you, you can go to every Monday Mac Brown press conference this year, and he's like, there's a... And I'm, I'm quoting Mac Brown. I'm not making this up. Mac Brown says, straight up. That's why Gene talks so to y'all on Monday. That's a Gene question. That's why he's here after me. He'll talk to you about it in 20 minutes. I'm not making it up. Max did it all year. I wish I was as good as one thing in my life as Mac Brown is. At it's it's really impressive. I, it's I really impressive. It, I, it, it's impossible for me <laughs> today. Is it, How is that not his job? Well, he's a, he's because he's a CEO. He's a football CEO. <laughs> I, I would say that when you when you get to the point about Carolina and defense, they've got the fastball. The question is, can they throw the fastball? when they've got to strike the guy. They can. They cannot. They threw it on opening night. Yeah. They have thrown it at Man, times. They look good. They look great on opening Confidence night. Confidence is a hell of a drug. They look good against Miami, too. The Georgia Tech team, I think, broke them. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing about Georgia Tech is is that Carolina's, Carolina's inability to do the one thing Georgia Tech could do. And, and that was? Stop the run. Oh, yeah, okay. Because Georgia Tech had Dante Smith, Trey Cooley, from Nightdale, they have all these kids that they're willing to kind of put in the fire a little bit, and it's mm-hmm. interesting to watch it happen. And I, I look, I, I think we're just setting the stage for Saturday night. It's it's not going to be the greatest game in the series. It never is. Standpoint, but the thing about it is, I think that's what State wants. Yeah, man, it is, it is absolutely going to be wild. The one thing State's done in this four-game winning streak is they've stayed on schedule. 
And they, they they cannot trade paint with Carolina. No. If Carolina comes out like they did the world famous Miles Dorn night, mm-hmm. and it's thirty five seven at the first quarter, wow, forget it. Yeah. Even even it's fourteen nothing, because that that's what that Clemson game looked like to me. It looked like a state. This that prepared Carolina for this game. Mm-hmm. If Hampton, I'm telling you, if he reaches that ball out, yeah, which you're taught not to do by it's the way, seventeen nothing. It's fourteen nothing. It's fourteen nothing. Clemson is not equipped no. to come from behind. No. If they can do something like that against State and just get a two-score lead. I disagree. And you know what will happen in the building. You no, I disagree. You know what will happen in the building. No, 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 no. I know what you're saying. I don't think Carter Finley Stadium is going to go full P on C. Loud sucking noise takes place. No, I. Let's get back to what you started this conversation with Joe about Peyton Wilson. Yeah. Do you think Peyton Wilson down 14 nothing against UNC is going to allow for that defense yep. to get shown up? That's a defense that's going to make a play. That's a defense that might have a pick six or a defense that might put the offense in a good scoring position. I don't believe that states... Let's go back to the Duke game. Yeah. And after the Duke game, what did Dave Dorn talk about? Well, all we got to do is cut down on these stupid yeah. mistakes. Oh, right. Penalty, all the things that Carolina's defense yeah. does, by the way. Yeah. State's like, no, 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 no. That's not who we are. Tony Gibson, you know, he's worth his weight in the in the contract. He's done a great job. He's done a great job. Like, no, 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 no. That's not who we are. So right. they corrected the mistakes. And as much as I get why they went to MJ Morris, they needed the spark. They had to do something different. Brennan Armstrong wasn't getting it done. He needed to be kind of put in rice for a little bit right. and hit the reset, and it's worked. The defense is the reason why they went 3-1 and one during that stretch with MJ Morris. All he had to do was keep it simple. And that continued itself with Brennan Armstrong when he came back. It's like, hey, buddy, let's keep it simple. And I do think that's the reason why, to your point about if Carolina can go up 14-0 or 17-0, I still don't buy that that game is over. What well, if Brennan Armstrong's not playing? Yeah, Wes. <laughs> you tell us, Wes. You you get as Joe as Joe discovered. Might be appropriate to see what Johnny Evans has got left in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> I get Terry Harvey. Uh, like Terry Harvey's a buddy of mine. You yeah, Terry Bobby in Carolina with Ben Finley. At least we knew. Uh, yeah, Finley yeah. Ethan Rhodes. I don't know who I'm that is. Sir, Ethan Rhodes. Rhodes. This is where this is, sure. as we're wrapping up this conversation. It was Joe had an epiphany this year about he thought he had all the insight. He thought he was getting all this information. <laughs> The epiphany was in 17 or 16. What was the epiphany that day? Uh, when Chris Fowler was talking about a very specific injury ah. that I thought only I knew about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is that what those meetings from, are for? From his dad. Oh, you're I'm talking thinking. about the uh, huh. TV, the world famous TV production meeting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You get all. You well, get all the info. And, and, though. And no, really. You get all the info. Really, West. I could run down a list of lies. This I was going to oh, say okay. I'm not going to slight you, but you know there's a difference when Herbie and Chris Fowler are in town for the big ABC. No question. Oh, that's yeah. No, you know, yeah. the knee pads are out when that. <laughs> now, come on. Yeah. By the way, friends, just so we're all. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be offering you any post game recaps drinking, uh, you know, house to kill from a private jet. <laughs> 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 We don't want to. We just yeah, just just, saying. just follow Wes's lead and go for it. You want to see me? I'm at I'm the, I'm your guy. Five forty five Sunday morning at RDU. Yeah. Uh, C one. Where is Maiden, North Carolina? Maiden, North Carolina. That's where Ethan Rhodes is from. Yeah. Never heard of it. Maiden is uh, Eastern part of the state. <laughs> it's, it's always a good sign when somebody's bio is no information available. Oh. Well, well, you website. know what? That just sounds like a legend ready to be made. <laughs> it does. Okay. That's what that sounds like to Get me. The chart. All Get the chart. Get Get the Scott Parsage material ready from basketball. All right, Wes. Where you don't you don't have your sheet? Where's your sheet? What sheet? Your big card. your big card. card. Your card's insane. Your, yeah, I don't your, have it with me. Okay, where do you keep it? Well, it's in a folder in a backpack. Right? You like you have it super secret? Like you have well, like a mead, like a trapper keeper for it? Yeah, yeah not it's really. A, it probably doesn't fit, right? Yeah, it's eleven by seventeen. I've gone to a system uh, the last few years where I do my NFL card, mm-hmm. college card, come in on actually Tuesday afternoon. Okay. And then it, what helps is when you have the same teams over and over. Yes, so yes, Carolina sure. State, I'll transfer a lot of information I haven't used, plus the you know the details, the facts and filaments is Allison okay, Raleigh. Gotcha. Know, so. Well, hey, man, thanks for dropping hey, by. Uh, by the way, boys, congratulations. This is nice. Yeah, glad well you could drop by. Job well done. And look, a job well done for you, man. The, the script was fantastic. <laughs> Tie it back to the start of this conversation. I cannot wait to see what you've got cooked up for next year. Like a little cliffhanger. Well, I'm going to tell you this now. <laughs> 
I I don't know, and as I was telling you the story at the top, a guy at ESPN who had been in TV for 40 years says, in 40 years, I've never seen a package like y'all's package with the games you've seen. Good stuff. And next year, who knows, maybe we'll start, maybe we'll have games where we open up the phone lines in the fourth quarter. Hey, man, let's go. I, I was going to say, it seems like it seems like the 8 o'clock ACC Network game that you're on and uh, the CW game have been bonkers material. I'm sorry, there's going to be a weekly a- a- ACC after dark next year, sir. Hasselbeck and I referred I to that. Hope we you don't get that did one. You hear, <laughs> did you hear uh, you hear Tim and I were talking when uh, Duke and Carolina were playing? Yeah. That, or no, State, Miami, one of State Miami was the game we mentioned. That yeah. We were getting ready to do the schedule announcement on Monday night. And I looked at Tim and I said, Tim, hey, next year ACC after yeah. dark. And he goes, yeah, well, maybe you can then create social media graphics showing people where you fly all over the country. <laughs> Another Hasselbeck just kind of laid one in there. Joe, would you like that? Tim, you guys, Tim, you guys Tim are spicy. You, on you, you guys are spicy. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, Wes. Take we, care, guys. we appreciate you dropping by, and of course, all the support uh, in our what do we call it? A journey? Do we want to get uh, philosophical? Sojourn. Here? Yes. Good that's luck what it's all at about. The breeze through Saturday night. Thank you. You're coming by. Dark I don't know why you're actually like yeah, you're come by, dude. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's probably on the way to your car anyway. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> could be. We'll be staying up at four points by the end of the day. Cardinal Givens. <laughs> no, that's good. All right, get out of here. Always enjoy hanging out with Wes. It's a good old time. Rocking the home field hoodie today. Just a straight up, straight like, up, straight up home field hoodie. It's a very, very comfortable hoodie. And you'll be you'll be glad to know, Joe. It arrived yesterday. My Christmas gift. The yellow one? Yeah. For real? It showed up. I got an extra large Big Four Wake Forest Champs t-shirt in the mail from home field. Huh. You bought it, right? I did. So, so but then they sent me a note. They were very apologetic. There must have been, they must have found one. Do you know what it was? What was it? A Thanksgiving miracle. It was. Respect the bird and get a Thanksgiving miracle of a Wake Forest Big Four Champions t-shirt. I have to wash it first, but I'll wear it next week. Thank it's you for awesome. That. Yeah. I'm still working on your Christmas gift. Well, this is not something you can buy. It's not. Some home crafts. It's not even that. It's me having to call in a favor to oh. see if I can acquire it. Okay. So hopefully it happens. Otherwise, I'm going to have to scramble to find your gift. Okay. And it won't be a it won't be a weird soda. So I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful this comes. But you know through. what you could do? What's that? Just go to Homefield Apparel. Could do that. Homefieldapparel.com. Use the code OG23. Save 15%. They got all kinds of other things going on too. You'll, you'll save big. So check them out. Homefieldapparel.com. Speaking of uh, saving money, um, you can save money in all sorts of ways. But you, there's a difference between saving money and leaving money on the table. And when it comes to home sales, you do not want to leave money on the table. You don't want to take some sort of guaranteed offer, which is absolutely coming below market at this yeah. point. A lot of homes in this area are going for over market. You need representation. You need a broker. You have hometown realty to make that happen. And they can navigate you through a lot of the new construction that's happening here in Wake County, Orange County, Durham County, and the Triangle. Yeah, step one, go to myhtr.com. Step two, you'll see the toggle. Buy, sell, make your choice. You're on your way. Step three, that mortgage calculator, my personal favorite. You got to know what you can afford, what you can get into. But that new construction is key, especially in my area in in the G. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on between Garner and downtown Raleigh. So go with the experts. Go with Hometown Realty. It's myhtr.com. For a second there, I thought you were telling me step one, open the box. But no. Step one. Different holiday. Go to the website. Uh, speaking of holidays, we got Thanksgiving. You want to keep things simple. Uh, take some work off your plate uh, when it comes to entertaining appetizers. Real good way to do it. Go to Butcher's Market. They got great appetizers. They got great sides. Or if you want to go different for Thanksgiving, like you are doing the lasagna, right? Yep. The pre-Thanksgiving lasagna. You can go there and get what like I got fresh sausage. ground I got the meat. ground beef. I'm all set, man. Let's I'm go. ready to roll. Very excited about that. Uh, can you bring me some leftover lasagna? I can, yes. I'm because you know lasagna better. Uh, by by Monday, by no, Monday, no, no, no. I'll see fine. you on Saturday. That's right. Yeah. Bring me the lasagna. I'll have cold lasagna. In the no, actually, I'll lot. see you on Friday because we'll end up delivering Oakwood Pizza Box to the ESPN ACC Network crew. <laughs> okay, I'll bring you a piece on Friday. Okay, if you say so. Yeah, yeah if you say so. That. Brownlow lady in studio with us. What up, Lauren? Hello. 
Uh, Joe is wearing not... Joe is wearing the coastal champs shirt from is Carolina. It, for, it, for it doesn't terms. say coastal, which yeah. is actually like why shouldn't it? <laughs> it should say coastal on there. It doesn't. It just says championship it, yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. Just says they were in the championship game. But that 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 hoodie that we picked oh, up in Charlotte I ahead wanted of the, it to say because it was the I, last coastal. It oh, was yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but we were in Charlotte and we we got that from a nondescript tent in right a next, little celebration yeah. village. Oh, I see. Okay. It's, it's actually the most comfortable. Uh, you know how many hoodies I own? Yes. This is actually the most comfortable one that I own. Really? It's, I love this. Hoodie. That's fascinating. And what I love about it too is that it just says Carolina Tar Heels and it yeah. looks like the Tar Heels is one word, not separated. Oh. And this also is a cursed well, you hoodie. Could maybe see a little bit. There's a little yeah, bit of a space. A little bit of a there. space. But... A little bit of a space. <laughs> but it's also a cursed hoodie because every time Jillia wears it. Yeah. Carolina loses. I mean, I don't know that it's the hoodie. Maybe. <laughs> it could just be. I was going to say, you almost made Joe spit out his water. I'm sorry. But here's, I think, the real reason why Joe wore that hoodie today. He's been waiting for you to come in after Louisville clinched a spot in the ACC yes. championship game. I Coastal saw you champs. got a bunch of likes and retweets on your division tweets. That was cute for you. <laughs> it was for you, too. <laughs> yeah. Fans don't are fan service start, hot takes. It's don't fine. start you two. We got plenty to talk about. <laughs> no, I think we We've last look. I said it on the podcast yesterday. <laughs> there was a segment that I scrapped because it was horrendous. It was just it just melted down to me and Lauren yelling at you yes. about this. Yes. yes, and that was not. It was not good content. <laughs> no, like I have to self edit sometimes, and it's fine. <laughs> but I do feel like, and we and Joe and I talked about this a little bit yesterday. If it was so easy, more teams would do it. And I think we take away commending Louisville for having a favorable for sure. schedule. Then taking advantage of and it. And taking advantage and of taking it. A hundred percent. Yeah, yes. they got some good bounces as well. All of those things are necessary. Mm -hmm. You have to have a little luck go your way. Yeah. You have to be good. And you have to have the schedule break your way. If you're not one of those top tier teams in general in college football, right? You need all of those things to happen. And you. the wild part is, I mentioned this yesterday, we're never going to have a proper sample size going forward. This is the no. only year we're ever going to get from this outside of Notre Dame's time in the pandemic for this divisionless football. Because once Cal, Stanford, and SMU joined the league man who i don't know who the hell knows how that's going to play out with their little scheduling pods and everything else that's taking place well then when clemson and florida state leave the league <laughs> <laughs> then it's free for all <laughs> yeah then it'll be a then it'll be i don't an know why mess. you're laughing that's then, why they right. added those then three shitty one schools. is the coastal like then they everyone, always have been and now I'll, everyone I, else has always been the coastal. And now i will accept <laughs> i will accept the ancillary point to that which is at nc state Still will never win. No, they won't. So <laughs> yeah, to, to well. Lauren's point, it's the meme with the astronauts, the meme with the yeah. astronauts looking at Earth, and it's like yeah. always has been. Yeah. Wait, are you saying the entire I conference have is the coastal? Said that. That's always just been my always argument been. because look, even the year Carolina went undefeated in the coastal, there were still state fans like, oh, that's easy, it's the coastal, yeah. and it's like y'all, like, come on, y'all have had a, the worst Wake Forest team I've seen in my lifetime in the Atlantic before. Mm -hmm. You've had awful Boston College teams over there. Mm -hmm. Like the one thing I can say for the coastal is that. Rarely, until recently, actually, when Georgia Tech went away from the triple and everything else, did you have once once Duke got good, you very rarely had a game that you knew you were going to win every single weekend. That's the one thing that was different between the two. But you didn't have a sure loss on your schedule either. So yeah. obviously that. Yeah. So one other thing about scheduling and, and the ACC and everything else, a quick aside about basketball, because basketball has started. And I feel like <laughs> I know I love Joe with like the breaking news. Breaking news. There. No, I just get so it. you know, just so you know, no, basketball I'm, I'm, has I'm moving into started. it slowly as well. I'm not quite like all the, the way in yet, but I'm checking out a few games. I watched Louisville yesterday. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Um, I am dabbling in the start of the college basketball season and I'm already seeing it happen to the ACC again. I don't know if it's as bad. Uh, Doesn't it help Ned if you don't lose by as much? Well, <laughs> or am did, I making well, that up? Did you up? see what happened to Virginia well, against well, Wisconsin Virginia last Virginia night? Virginia and Wisconsin. I honestly, and you know, I like watching Virginia play. Yeah. With you know, when they have good players on offense that can, you mm -hmm. know, I, I enjoy them. I enjoy that. But like to watch them play, no, I would never. I would never. I would rather pour. Why, why, why would you walk myself. in here and choose violence today? 
You it's want- just what I feel. <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> I'm not just going to pick a popular stance only because people like it more. Oh. That's not who I am. Okay. That's fair. It's that's just fair. That's genuinely how I feel about Virginia. It's all, I mean, Joe can tell you that. No, I know. You've always felt that way. Well, and Malcolm Brogdon's the one who convinced me. He sat me down. We had a I, long talk about it, and he kind of swayed me on it. I mean, to be honest, Malcolm Brogdon could sell anyone almost So it was, it was funny. I had a listener ask me about, are we going to attempt another, you know, the, the the triangle sports equinox where oh, everybody's yeah, yeah. playing at once and we're it's not as crazy as last year where you had state carolina and duke all playing basketball games and the carolina hurricanes playing a game that night state and the hurricanes pulled off the double noon tip off with a night game last week was super annoying though for football yeah everybody was playing at the same time and thankfully the the hockey rink that i was in in roanoke virginia because it's a virginia it's virginia tech country obviously they yeah. had the game on at the rink so while oh, all nice. the warm-ups and all that stuff were happening i was keeping an eye on that game and i had to watch the carolina game later regardless there's there's one date i think it's march 2nd 2024 that okay. we have a a, a mini equinox where that's the state Carolina and Duke Virginia game. And it got me thinking. <gasps> that's happened before. I it's feel happened like. before. Hasn't and it? remember, yeah. you'll remember you and I did the uh, double. Yes. Because like, people got honestly, travel game. And that, yes. is, that is not fair. People should not do that to us. And to people make got us mad. Shows. People got mad at me and Lauren. For leaving be, early. Because the state Carolina game, state won that game. And it went to overtime. They won that overtime, and that was and that was like a top five oh, matchup or a top ten matchup Kevin's at Cameron. first game there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they won in overtime, but we yeah. had to leave when overtime. So, like we were the like, we're Al gonna Freeman miss. Game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We and we didn't get there until like what was it like second half? Almost? Second half. We got but there yeah. for the start of the second you half. You saw yeah. the Grayson Allen travel. Yes. Though, so yes, I that love, was the important. Duke part. Virginia games rule. I don't care what anybody. Yeah, says. they're great games. <laughs> those games uh, are normally. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, those yeah. games are yeah. awesome. Every I, possession is like n- so now tense. You, now you're making me mad at Duke for not being there to take care of Virginia in 2019 <laughs> when I needed them to take care of Virginia in 2019. All, uh, tangent aside, God. and that's all. You want to talk about scheduling gifts? Tangent. Virginia's c- basketball schedule rotation for the last however many hundred years. Yeah. Dear God. Well, you finally came around on Virginia's I, winning the championship. You still yes, got to go out there and freaking do it. I have made peace with their okay, 2019 then. title. Okay, then. Yes. <laughs> this is the Thanksgiving Super episode, so we are stuffed with tangents today. I wanted to get back to the basketball point real quick in that I have a I have a sinking feeling that the ACC is going to find itself creating a bad metrics base point baseline that's going to start the process again on you know one bit ACC two bit ACC I'm sorry all that are we, kind of stuff like but we, should we also not be paying attention to what every other league is doing because there's been a lot of questionable for, net law like I agree with you but for whatever <laughs> reason this has picked up steam with the what I like to call the basketball Illuminati and well I, they love the Big Ten they abs- and they're falling in love with the SEC I absolutely love the Big Ten they love the personalities and mad of the at coaches the ACC still for breaking up the Big East there is that too I and, mean that's, that's true no for you're a lot right. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So when I listen to Matt Norlander and Gary Parrish, they're already kind of talking about that stuff. I'll listen to Jeff Goodman and the crew with the um, the after dark for Field of uh, Six uh, Field of Sixty Eight, and it's like, can we just hold off yet? I mean, I, I get there. I don't think two, it, like what's what's the, been like horrific. I mean, no, it's it's so, <laughs> what, what's what's going to happen is Louisville's going to start setting the bad baseline. Well, Notre Dame lost. Notre Dame lost to to, yes. lost. And what's going to happen with the bad baseline? Wake just lost to LSU, who's not that great. That was an overtime loss, I think it was. They just yeah. seem, but the the, so, I, the losses Joe's talking about though are like those horrible ones that like really impact everyone's net. And that's my point. Yeah. We're going to get in a conference play with this bad baseline, and Louisville's going to sneak up and beat somebody in the ACC. It's going to screw things yeah, up. Yeah, no, they definitely are because like you've seen the way they played the last couple saying, of they games. They just fought against Texas. I don't Think there's and Indiana. Oh, for the they moral victories Indiana. for Louisville. I mean, okay. come on. Okay, Louisville, well, Louisville I mean, lost to Chattanooga. Well, that, that's they're a top two hundred team. Mm-hmm. Like you have to look at last year. They're we're, better than <laughs> last year. Why, the baseline why we're is doing in this hell. right now. I don't know, but <laughs> um, this is one of the. This is one of those. Remember the show on November twenty first oh. when I tell you that the ACC is going to find itself with another one of those. Are they only going to get five bids? I will, Actually, I will, they right me, now. Me, Actually, their schedule wasn't terrible last year. Louisville's they just no, didn't win any games. They didn't win any games. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean when Brad Brownell's at the end of the season telling yeah. you, "Oh well, you know, blah, 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 blah. well, <laughs> I can tell you why. Let's go back to November, which is stupid. I how mean, we set the stuff up? Maybe, but we'll see. I, I I didn't feel like as many major conferences had teams lose awful as like as many like awful games but i'm yeah. seeing that crop up this year more than i feel like i did in recent years too so maybe everyone will be 
Because it's a numbers thing at the end of the day. It doesn't matter what perception is. Like, the yeah. numbers will speak for themselves. How bad is Coppin State? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they were Louisville bad. will beat him by 20. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Well, Juan Dixon's been gone uh -oh. now. Georgia Tech lost to UMass Lowell. They, apparently, UMass Lowell's like, somebody was tweeting me that they're actually a very good, like, they're picked to finish second in their league or something. I'm mm. like, well, does that know that? Like, no, I mean, they, UMass Lowell was 26 and 8 last year. Yeah. So go. they were like, they're really not a bad team. But yeah. I, I didn't know that they were even a team that existed, I, if we're being 100% honest. Are you ready for some <laughs> premature evaluation? Sure. Let's do it. I was going to say, do the, do the noises. I, I, I do the noises. I'll, I'll, I'll put this in. All right. <laughs> Let's, uh, okay. All right, Brian Lowe, let, let's start with the obvious game. NC State, North Carolina. Yeah. Carter Finley Stadium. Of course. As we joked with West Durham, who was in studio with us earlier, they couldn't have written a better script in the ACC offices for the game that we have on Saturday. Oh, don't don't say things like that. Uh, I can't wait to see how this game finishes in the most, like in the dumbest way possible. And it gives us stuff to talk about. You know, both teams were celebrating in the end zone. I mean, right. We're going to get one of those. We're gonna get something like that. Something dumb. We're gonna get a well, two yard it will hail mary during the game. Whoa! Who's the, who's, who's doing the, that? Who's the backup quarterback we're talking about? Ethan Rhodes. Ethan okay. Rhodes, for NC State. Okay. Legend. You thought Ben Finley was a legend? You thought Daniel Evans was a legend? No. Ethan Rhodes from what? Maiden, North Carolina. Maiden. Yeah, legend. I don't know where that is. What? Yeah, I've never that's heard what we're of saying. It. Like, it's never a great sign when you go to someone's bio on the the school's homepage and it says no information available. Yeah, that's not great. Ooh. That's not great. He might be the person playing quarterback for NC State on Saturday. Just saying. Wait, really? I didn't know it was that bad. I mean, Joe's Joe's been the QB whisperer this season. I have been. Okay. So be, be like Joe, Joe's Joe's you, sourced you kind up. of like known what's gonna okay. No, Joe's I, sourced up. I this. just know oh, well, that he took a shot in in the, the fourth quarter of that game. Yeah, the people have been worried and, about you know they don't have a backup quarterback. No. Yeah, well, this will really this is really gonna test or, that theory or, about Carolina and backup quarterbacks, though. Oh, <laughs> there's that. Or or MJ Morris tells his parents, Mom, Dad, <laughs> I gotta be out here, man. <laughs> Legends rise. No, maybe that's what happens. I, I doubt that one. All right, that would spent, be wild. We spent a good chunk of time talking about that game already with Wes. Who you got? Stay. Oh, like no hesitation. No. <sighs> See, I don't think it's that easy, Lauren. Okay. What about North Carolina have you seen this season that would lead you to believe they can go into a into an emotional game on the road in front of a bunch of very passionate and loud fans? Yeah. And withstand a well-coached and good team's best shot. Mm. I mean, I'll wait. If someone's got something, I'm willing to hear it. Okay. I That's don't fair. know. I have not seen I've seen nothing from Carolina that would lead me to believe that that's the case. And, you know, you couple in too their their issues with protection last week. And I know Clemson, you know, even though Clemson's down for Clemson, like their mm -hmm. defense is still very good. Okay. And so, but still, like, I don't know, man. Let's I don't see it. What I wanted to delve into is one of Gilio's favorite things to do, and that is college football Armageddon situations. <laughs> Ooh, I like yes. this. Too. So we have an ACC championship <laughs> game. That's set. Yes. I, I got Florida Joe State. on this one. I'm very proud of myself. Florida State and Louisville. <laughs> and typically, as Joe pointed out to me yesterday, I tend to opt out of the, but what if this happens? And if X, Y, Z happens, then what do you do with Alabama? And a lot of times the what ifs, like we're actually wrong anyway. So half the time, like, and that's not just us, like everybody. But, but like when you two had that conversation while I was in Detroit about ACC tiebreakers, I could tell Julia was probably doing that segment pantless because <laughs> it was like, for that. like, oh, okay, what if this happens? What if this happens? This happens, and of course, what does Louisville do? I love that do? kind of stuff. Though. Louisville yeah, won. <laughs> took care of business, and that was the end of it. Fine. Yeah. So that gets us to Florida State in Florida this weekend. It's not Ooh. that Florida at five and six is scary. It's the fact that Jordan Travis's injury was yeah. scary, yeah. and that changes oh, the trajectory of. I, it's terrible. That changes the trajectory of Florida State now. Bud Elliott on the Pick Six uh, on the Cover Three podcast. I'm getting my CBS podcast confused. But Elliot, shout out to Chip, pointed out that Florida State's backup has stepped up and has won yeah, some games. Yeah, and he's got some experience. He's got yeah, some experience. Like he's not, it's, it's not like he's not, just coming in. It's not an Ethan. I already forgot his last name. I'm Rhodes. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. If you go to Florida State's backup, you'll see information. Yes. That's the point. There, there will not be no information. <laughs> <laughs> 
I see them beating Florida. Is the true worry Louisville, Kentucky? Well, that's always a worry for Louisville. Yes. 100%. Because if Florida State is fine, (laughs) if they beat Florida and they beat a one-loss Louisville team in the ACC championship game, they're undefeated. It doesn't matter who your quarterback is. As an undefeated Power 5 team, you are going in from the ACC. Straight up. However, Mm -hmm. beating a two-loss Louisville team in the ACC championship game might add a wrinkle to this. It might. I mean, I think it'll tell us a lot where they're at tonight. Well, maybe not. You know, you never know how the committee is. That's the thing. Yeah, I, I, I have a. It's just hard because, like, well, to your point about the we're recording this on a Tuesday before the college football oh, playoff, right? Because this is our last show. So of the sorry. Week. No, I just want I want to make clear that people understand what they're hearing. And if they put them at five, though, I think that's the message. Then. Doesn't matter. Oh, tonight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're going to get jumped by by Washington, and they might not. But I don't think because the committee has a long standing history of. These little snapshots, and when they get their 13th data point, they will completely scrap everything that's happened at the beginning of the season. That's fair, but my doomsday scenario, even even if Louisville beats Kentucky, yeah, is George is Alabama beating Georgia. They put both of those teams in, and they go, well, what did FSU do? Or, actually, and then it goes, well, they beat LSU, and then then they, the the SEC that, schools will be like, well, so do we. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hear you. I think like at the end of the day with this committee, I actually feel like I don't recall a year where I feel like they've done the wrong thing necessarily when at the end of it. Right. When they actually put the teams in, Mm -hmm. I haven't really had a big issue with it. Like it's all made sense to me. And so for me, I have a hard time imagining that they would leave an undefeated conference champion out, especially a brand name one, right? Mm -hmm. Like Louisville would have had a more uphill battle in the same scenario as Florida state. I think than Florida state does. We'll see. I mean, obviously, right. I think it matters. The quarterback does matter. I'm not arguing with you, but if they win those games without him and they, if they're able to do it convincingly, especially. Yeah. I think it matters what they do in those two games and how they look in those two games. You're right. I mentioned this in my Saturday road column that, Kenyon Martin broke his leg the week of the Conference USA tournament, and they docked the obviously a different sport, the whole thing. Yeah, but they were the number one team the whole no, year. You're right; they yeah. got docked. For and that. then all of a sudden, it was like, well, no, you're not a number one seed because you don't have your best player. Right. I think it's fairly inarguable that Jordan Travis is Florida yes. State's best 100%. player. Hundred percent. And we all under like I don't think that they were necessarily like going to win a national title this year anyway, but. This obviously impacts. I don't know. Uh, it, it was an. It, it was. A, it still is an open tournament to me. My pro, my issue for Florida State. I feel like Georgia's just been bored, honestly. Uh, well, <laughs> part of I, me does. I'm, not, I'm not sure they're the best team. I, I think they're getting credit for what they've been the last two years. To be perfectly honest with yeah, you. Yeah, I think there's a but lot of that going on. Too. You know, they cannot resist two teams in particular when it comes to Selection Sunday: Ohio State and Alabama. Alabama, remember, lo- has lost. <laughs> And or not played and gotten in. Yeah. However, okay? you're right, but <laughs> yeah. they so, they also have recently. I feel like they did leave Alabama out during a scenario recently where they everybody was like they're going to put them in for sure, and then they didn't, and then they did the same with Ohio State. I feel like because they and both coaches whined the whole time and said, "Remember, Urban Meyer tried to be like we had adversity because of me." Yeah. <laughs> oh, he left that part out. I'm sorry. Whoopsies. <laughs> You know, so I I don't know. We'll see. I I haven't had a huge issue with anything the committee's actually done. I probably would if they were undefeated. This is the last year of the four teamer. Mm -hmm. Like this is this would have been the perfect year for a twelve team. Yeah, no, it really would have. It really would have. I think we're gonna get. I think this is gonna. This is the norm now because of the transfer portal. Quarterbacks being able to go different places. I honestly think that this is gonna be more of the norm, especially with the conferences being completely out of whack too, and the unbalanced schedules, which has been a theme of today's Mm -hmm. show. That's all going to lead to a much better product once we get to the college football playoff at 12 teams. The question is, how are they going to set it up? Because they still haven't finalized that yet. Is it going to be six and six? Is it going to be five and seven? Like, how's that going to work? No, there won't be six. I'm I'm with you on that. It's going to be more likely five and seven. Of course, all this is for not because I still think we need some madness in college football. Georgia Tech's going to be Georgia, right? I'll tell you what. Joe. <laughs> Joe. I have not that been drinking. That would be wild. I have not. So the Colonel Taylor is still in its box. So I have not been drinking that Listen, so far this year. Brent Key, I will say this. For those, of, for those of you who have not watched a lot of Georgia Tech this year, I yeah. have ended up there 
for just Syracuse for Georgia Tech, reasons, yeah. I just got sucked in. You know, sure. you know me in bad football. I know you love bad football. Like, you are a sicko. You are a true sicko. <laughs> Brent Key was like about ready to fight Dino Babers by the like they they are he they're a salty bunch. They yeah. they've got a little fire to them. Yeah. They like being underestimated and all that stuff. So I hear you. However. If this I is a gigantic number, I, I, I would take the number. Yeah, the number is one thing. What the, is the, the number? Win. 24. I, yeah. Whoa, we could be driving to Virginia. How, drive many, to Virginia? how many good Paul Johnson teams weren't able, like, still got blown out by Georgia at the well, end? Like, oh, that was a I know. Styles make fights issue. Yeah. And Dabo's not going to Dabo's not gonna do something stupid. And No, they're 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 going to crush that. They're going to pour it out. You think? Yeah, I think you're probably right. Year. Yeah. Dear yeah. God. Okay, I'm just making sure. I mean, yeah. we're in like Dabo buy stock mode. Although you know, would crushing it... South Carolina gives him like, like, hey, we're the best four loss team in the yeah, country. I mean, like, well, imagine him after that game. Like, oh, he's what, mad. They lose. Le- yeah. Oh yeah. If Dabo's lost. mad at David Hell for the. Uh, there's only three teams that have won eight games. I mean. And, and he Hale, Hale, put the David Hale is the, at the end. No, I know, but you know, da- David Hale is like a Dabo whisperer too. I so I can see, like, hey, what are you doing, man? Hey, man, no, that was like well, we talked about. Sometimes you need a little extra juice. And yeah, you go to Hale and you get it. D- Dabo got <laughs> back a, channel it. Dabo got a call last night too. Nothing like Tyler from Spartanburg, but he, uh, he got told no more fake punts. That was which great. I mean, fair critique. It's, a, if it's we're, very if fair. We're, if we're being honest, he called uh, Shane like crying Shane Beamer yep. or something like that. <laughs> I think chat. I think that, I think the reason why Chapel. Fowler, of course, the fans are lit. Chapel Fowler absolutely loves his beat at the state because he gets to it's transcribe the coaches show, and it's one of the few coaches shows in the ACC that actually provides constant entertainment. Absolutely, you don't get that on the Dave Doran show. You don't get that on the Mac Brown show. You definitely no. get it because they're taking calls in Clemson. That's the best part. Anyway, that wraps it up for premature evaluations. Brian Lowe, yes. Have a happy Thanksgiving. I will do my best. Oh, I got to show you before we get out of here. Wes has thoughts. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to drink it because Joe pointed out to me that it's probably not the best idea to drink this, but I found a 1991 Duke National Championship soda that's made by Coca-Cola. But the it is problem, an upsetting color. Right, isn't it? <laughs> it looks like the stuff at the at the hair salon where they, they yes. put the combs in yes. to disinfect it. Yes. No, do not drink that, please. So I you tried, might die. I tried to find a... But isn't that the best way to go? No. Like, no. When you, like come on. Don't you think it would be hilarious in the paper? <laughs> then you're family has to tell people how you went yeah that's embarrassing for you them go, you don't go out do that as, to them you go out as a legend and you know my stance on this when i die and you lower my casket please play what are you looking at the scores from oh the, yeah it, it was it's 91 because they beat unlv yeah they beat unlv 70 79 77 and obviously they beat kansas uh 72 uh 65 so nice. in 91 no but you know how it's you know when you guys you give the eulogy and whatnot. Please play the Fox injury music when you announce my death. <laughs> and I went out like a legend. Joe went out doing what he loves, drinking old sodas, yeah. old drinking, colored sodas. Drinking and comb disinfectant <laughs> liquid. And wow. I, and I will put the Atlantic Division participant shirt Please do. Uh, on no, your body. R. R. Put it, yeah, dress me in it. It probably won't fit me at that point, but dress me in it. That's if it how had, I want to go. If it had a ring to it to chant Atlantic the way it did SEC, they would have done it. <laughs> All right, Lauren, get out of here. All right. Always enjoyable hanging out with that Brownlow lady, although I feel like I have to stop bringing up the Panthers because it only triggers her. We had we had a tweet for Hey Joe, like, how is I know Lauren's dealing with long COVID. And obviously, we we right. care about her physical health. Yeah, you, you sh- really shouldn't torture her. But why are you adding on to that the Panther stuff? And I feel like with the Young Gun podcast, she keeps getting some, you know, there's levels of pack therapy. There's pants. Yeah, you gotta work through it. Yeah. She's definitely working through it with Dimitri, who we will talk to uh, live from the bathtub here in a second. Speaking of college football, every time we talk about college football, we've had a lot of college football in today's program. It's all brought to you by Wings Over. Check them out in downtown Raleigh, in Chapel Hill, and in Greenville. We're wrapping up the college football season. You got a couple, two, like at least two more weekends and then bowl season to get your wings. We had yet another satisfied customer, Joe, ahead of the State Carolina Club hockey game. They tailgated with wings over. Oh, great call. I hope they got the sweet chili, but whatever your flavor is, check out Ryan Malley's selection. It's at wingsover.com. Order online. They got a free parking there on Hillsborough Street. Go pick it up and yeah, bring it to your tailgate and enjoy. Yeah, I'm bringing this up. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm bringing this up on the StreamYard YouTube feed from Kevin crushing the pregame with wings over. 
real deal. Lemon pepper, garlic parmesan, waffle fries, the parking in the back, all those things. Now let's get the big dub on the ice. Of course, for Pac-Man Kev, that did not happen. <laughs> the parking in the back. See, I'm telling you, man, Costanza. <laughs> So anyway, go check out Wings Over, and uh, the online ordering is a breeze, and when they say it's going to be ready at 6.30, it is ready at 6.30. Big thanks to State Farm, real people in the area getting things done, just like Ryan over at Wings Over, and just like Matt Davis over at State Farm. Check them out, theoginsurance.com, insuregarner.com, or call them directly at 919-779-8277. Matt's there for you. You know, uh, one of the great billboards. What if you want to talk to a real person? Yeah. What if you want to save money too on your insurance? Best way to do that. Give Matt a call. 919-779-8277. And if you save money with Matt, what can you get? We haven't given those away yet, have we? Not yet. Not so yet. there's still a chance. What do you do? We got Duke basketball tickets mm -hmm. for Friday. They're playing Southern Indiana, but this is a bucket list item. You've never been to Cameron. You want to go. Easy enough. Is drinking that blue soda a bucket list item? No, for no It one. puts me on the bucket, I think. Yeah. That's probably what happens. Closer. To, it puts you closer <laughs> to needing a bucket list. Um, <laughs> leave a five-star review. Do that. Or uh, get a quote. Go mm -hmm. to theoginsurance.com. Get a quote. Show us your quote. You win those tickets. You're on your way. Yes. So go check them out. Again, insuregarner.com. And big thanks to Mosquito Authority. You've insured your home, right? You also want to make sure that your home is not dealing with pests. And that's where Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority come into play. Check them out, bugsbite.com. Uh, Hayes has me intrigued with this misting system with the mosquitoes. They got the mosquito treatment that I got all, all, season, all, all summer long, but they can take it next level that while I'm grilling on my patio, the misting system will keep those things at bay. Yeah, it's funny. Um, we, we arrived at Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority in different points in, in our lives, mm -hmm. but this is a service that we both use. And I thought, we had exhausted all of Hayes' services no. because I have the moisture barrier. No. I've gotten rid of mice. <laughs> they have it all. You have it in your backyard. Yes. And then now, now, termites, termites. So as you know, you have to have termite protection. So why not go with the best? Mosquito Authority, Pest Authority, go to bugsbite.com. We're moving on. Hanging out in his bathtub is Dimitri Ravanos, college football bubble bath in effect. That's not a colloquialism. No, he's literally in his bubble bath. Lich, Hi, Dimitri. Lich. How are you? Hi, Joes. How are you boys today? What are you drinking this morning? Uh, again, uh, Joe, once we found the $4 bottle of cul-de-sac wine, we have remained <laughs> brand loyal. <laughs> love it. I absolutely love it. All right. So we've, we've spent a good chunk of time today. Before we get into the college coaching carousel right yes. now and where Matt Canada might land in the college as a head coach. It's got to be the Patriots though. That's, Ooh, <laughs> that's, that's really, it could be the Panthers. <laughs> do you think, do you think there's anyone in Maryland thinking bring him home, bring the prodigal son home? <laughs> you, you know, he's got options. He always does. <laughs> he, always does. He, he doesn't have a lot of options offensively because no, he does the same thing. Right. All the the same he's good to go. <laughs> all right. You are Alabama boy. I am. And you like to, and what I always appreciate about, appreciate about you is that you, you like, you, you, you are a very sober look on our stupid version of college football in the area. <laughs> yes. And you, you almost have like a very bless your heart type attitude with a lot of things that happen to the triangle, but you come on, even you got to admit that in terms of bang for your buck, state Carolina gives you a lot of bang for your buck. It is the first, I want to say because of the time of year it's played, right? The first like four or five years that I lived in the triangle. I was back home in Alabama for Thanksgiving. And I was trying to explain to people that it is very similar to the Egg Bowl. Mm -hmm. This game means nothing nationally, but you don't understand how much these fan bases, particularly in football, just hate each other. And they live for ruining each other's day. So no, mm -hmm. I am I am all about the State Carolina rivalry. Uh certainly more than I am, you know, UNC UVA. So our uh, our mutual friend, Bomani Jones, has always pointed this out, and it really was illuminating the first time he explained it to me, and I'm sure he explained it to you, that Texas A&M is NC State <laughs> with oil money, all right? <laughs> and they're, constantly, they're constantly chasing the actual school in Texas, the yeah. University of Texas, and they keep throwing money at the problem. They keep, they, they keep being an eight-win team. So here they are without Jimbo Fisher. They paid him all this guaranteed money to go away. And their AD is talking about well, we're not an eight we're not an eight win program, buddy. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, look, Ross Bjork, who is their AD, is the one that made an absolute mess out of the Q Freeze firing uh, at Ole Miss. And, and, you know, the difference between A&M and State, although it is a very apt comparison, is A&M has a culture that is incredibly strange that they will go to the mat for, right? Like, I've been saying that the only other place in the world that Dabo Swinney could work would be College Station, Texas, because he requires a cult to lead. And brother, they are a cult through and through. The yell leaders. Yeah, that's a... Between the (laughs) magic spirit finger dances, the dog, the pretend military, like Mm -hmm. A&M is just its own weird, like they they are a church away from being a nation state. Which makes the only logical person for them to hire, Urban Meyer. Where else, where, oh my God. where else does one repent? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I mean, you, you have to imagine that you would get more cover for your activities at bars in the Houston area as the coach at A&M mm-hmm. uh, than you would as the coach of the Jaguars or the former coach of uh, the Buckeyes. So Mike Elko's not taking that job, right? I can't see it. I, I mean, I just can't for, for two reasons. Number one, you got to remember – like to Bomani's point, we're talking about oil money, right? Even though Elko makes a lot of sense, I think there are a lot of people that because he is not a name name would view that as a disappointment. On top of that, like I've heard Elko was pretty close on Michigan State, uh, and that may be a little bit more um, – that might give you a little more runway to actually build something. Or he could stay at Duke. Like he could he could do what David Cuckland did, right? Just establish an eight-win – uh, standard, and they're going to build you a statue. Ah, uh, but you get the difference between Elko and David Cutcliffe is that this was El- this was Cutcliffe's last coaching stint. Uh, Elko, as J- J- to Gilio's point, is probably allowing himself to find the right job. Maybe Penn State becomes open. But you bring sure. up Michigan State, and we actually talked about this with West Durham earlier. Why not Dave Dorn at Michigan State? Yeah, why not? I mean, hell, why not anybody at Michigan State? It's a no. dead end. It's starting next year when the Big Ten expands anybody could go there fail for three years and retire nicely at michigan state it's it's going to turn into that kind of program i will point out though joe that yeah, I, didn't didn't come here thinking that it was his last job remember he got really really close to taking tennessee and what was that 2009 yeah but that was the tenant my understanding of that 2010 tenet, that my understanding of that tennessee situation was um they they went down the list of candidates and eventually got to Cutcliffe. And uh, it was a mess of a job. So they went to Cutcliffe thinking, hey, we want you to coach here, but we're not going to let you bring any of your assistants. Yeah, exactly. We believe in our assistants. We just need you to run them. And David Cutcliffe, being the loyal guy that he is to a fault, said, hell no, I'm not doing it. Right. Right. Uh, the uh, we believe in our assistants, meaning we cannot afford to pay all of those buyouts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, an SEC school's broke? Come on. Man. But now, hold on about Michigan State, right? because we tried to talk about this yesterday. Yeah. They're obviously going to play Michigan every year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But we don't know what these schedules are going to look like. And there are going to be years that are magical, like Louisville this year, where you avoid everybody and you're like, look, look what we did. And, and now you have an expanded playoff, too. I, I think Mich- I think the big winners in the Big Ten's expansion are Michigan State and Penn State. You can see that. I mean, I could see Penn State for sure. I just, I don't know that Michigan there has been playoff, history huh? outside of those magical seasons. Michigan State's yeah. been to the college football playoff. They've been to the college football playoff when Brady Hope was the coach of Michigan. I mean, you've got to put a big asterisk next to that. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, back to Alabama boy. If Nick Saban gets to the college football playoff this year because of course he is, because everything's going to break his way in the next two weeks. Is he done after this? I don't see why he wouldn't be. I mean, he just turned 72 uh, on Halloween. What more does he have to accomplish? And I was making this point on uh, Birmingham radio last month, and they were calling me a heretic. Like, his <laughs> wife his wife did force him to take her to Italy this summer, and he seems to have come back like a guy that realized, oh, there's this whole other life out there I could be having with all this money. Dimitri, you have that sulfite-free wine once. Man, it changes your life. Like, wait a minute. I drank a whole bottle of wine and I don't have a headache and I'm not hungover. What is this yeah. magic? What is yeah, that? Yeah, look, Otto? He, Come on. he is. I, I think there's another thing at play here. He has talked a lot about the fact that one of his motivators, his dad owned a gas station 
in this super poor area of West Virginia, right? So one of the things his dad did was kind of run an unofficial pawn shop for people that needed loans. And he has grown up with the mentality that he is always one paycheck away from having to pawn something to his father. I think at 72 with literally nine figures in the bank, he has realized he's going to outlive that possibility. It'll be fine. So the question is, who's going to say who's coaching? I mean, they're going to try to get Kirby smart, but. Uh, yeah, they'll try to get Kirby. Don't don't. I, there was no reason to ever believe they wanted Dabo. I, I know that's a fun thing to say, but Dabo, mm -hmm. like he's crumbling at Clemson. Do you like I, David Cutcliffe told me one time that Saban tried to hire him as his offensive coordinator. And it was Cutcliffe's wife that said it is not normal for fans to know where the offensive coordinators kids go to school. Like that is that's what he'd be facing. That's what Dabo would be facing in Tuscaloosa. It's Kirby Smart, and after that, it's Dan Lanning. And I think Lanning at Oregon would be a home run. That's where he's from, not Alabama specifically, but that part of the country. He grew up on Saban's staff and then Kirby's staff. Like I think those would be one in one A. Okay. Yeah. Poor, poor Oregon, man. Uh, you know, you know what? Port in the storm. No, but you know what Oregon is? Oregon is what Miami should be. Yeah. You know, Miami, you gotta remember when Miami was Miami running never had money. No, here's my point. Miami was running hot in the 80s and the 90s, and it was essentially a jumping off point for the next, uh, 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 you know, for your coach to, to go to the NFL or a better job or whatever. Just go look at the trajectory. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was basically a portal to the NFL for a lot of those coaches, including Butch Davis, and it never worked out for him in Cleveland. Oregon, unlike Miami can survive being that launching point for a coach to go take a better job because oh okay cool because they would, have a bankroll who wouldn't want to coach at oregon at this point it, it's it's you kind of about the change oh well because yeah because of the big 10 <laughs> yeah that does that does factor into all this <laughs> about the change it does factor I, in I would argue though they go into the big 10 instantly the third or fourth best program i mean after yeah, yeah. after yeah. michigan and ohio state there's a huge drop off that we just for Tim doesn't exist in the Big Ten. Yes, much to it's, much to my annoyance. It's how yes. Iowa continues to win their division. Yes, <laughs> exactly. God bless them. And this is, by the way, with the Ferenc kid not meeting his contract obligation. Yeah, they. they the you saw they division. dumped Gatorade on him for that very thing yesterday uh, like, or last week. Right, you're getting fired. Here's the Gatorade. <laughs> Where was that for us? Come on. Yeah, the, whole, the whole celebration really did reek up. Your dad told us to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. The, that, that is a, and we've all been there. Uh, you're having a birthday party, and there were parents calling other parents like, look. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how to say this. Little Brian is not popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So can you just tell your kid to show up? We're going to have a great time. We got great food. We got candy. <laughs> Well, listen, I look forward to offensive analyst Brian Ferentz at Alabama next year. Ah, uh, yes. Is that where Frank Rice going after this year? Uh, <laughs> why, why not, right? Like, you took, we took a fired head coach and made him the offensive coordinator. Why not uh, Why not do it again? Yeah, Frank Reich, off, quality control at Alabama. Uh, next I've got Alabama's next coach. Who's he going to be? Belichick. Oh, stop. No. 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 No, he's more likely. Go get to, his boy. He's more likely to. He, go to he will be an analyst, though. Start, seven, uh, six. He's going to start up a lacrosse program. Does Alabama have lacrosse? Uh, we've got a club lacrosse team. Okay, well then he's going to he's going to take no, he's going to elevate Alabama's lacrosse he's team. He's destined to coach the Washington football team. Yeah, to get to three forty eight. Sadly, with Sam yes. Howell as his quarterback. Yeah, with the ghost of Vince Lombardi <laughs> on going to be terrible. shoulder. All right, Dimitri, uh, enjoy the rest of your cul-de-sac uh, swill in your bubble bath. Enjoy. Treat yourself. Hey, you call it swill, it all gets you drunk. <laughs> with a headache. All right, man, we'll talk to you later. All right, boys. A lot of you might be going to the NC State Carolina game. Maybe you're going to some other sporting events. You don't want average rideshare, man. You got to step it up. And that's where Sleek Fleet comes into play. And you can check them out online at sleek-fleet.com. Some of our listeners got to experience Sleek Fleet for our OG yeah. tailgate. Yeah, if you need some pick somebody picked up at the airport, or like you said, maybe you're going over to the arena, maybe you don't have parking. Mm -hmm. These are all reasons to call Tyler over at Sleek Fleet. 919-335-8840. 919-335-8840. Just do a search for Sleek Fleet, and I promise you, this is going to be a luxury experience. It's mm -hmm. also going to be just a worry-free, don't worry about parking, don't worry about anything else. Let Sleek Fleet handle the travel. 
very excited. I, I, I'm going to have to, I wonder if Sleek Fleet can do that mini Equinox for us. In yes. March. Tyler absolutely could. All right. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to have to talk to him about that. I think that could be a lot of fun. What's up next? What's up next? Joining us on the Heath Automotive Group Hotline is Ross Martin, former beat writer for North Carolina at InsideCarolina.com. He is pretending to be a Michigan man these days uh, before he comes back to the Triangle. And Ross, hey, what up? Good to see you again after we hung out in Detroit. From a Carolina perspective, I think this is interesting that you are in Michigan with Michigan, Ohio State, and you've gotten to experience that level of a rivalry. I maintain that I think everybody here maintains that the state Carolina rivalry is a rivalry nobody talks about, but actually might be one of the spiciest football ones in the country. Yeah. I mean, it could not be better this year either with both teams with eight wins trying to get nine. I mean, the closeness of, you know, that's the closest of the schools and just how many people you graduated high school with that went to either school. I'm on a group chat with like eight diehard NC State fans. And like, they're on the message boards, just like I am. And when UNC loses, they talk shit. When you know, NC State wins, loses, it's just a lot of back and forth. And yeah, you just can't imagine what it's like in offices across the kind of, across the, the Triangle and, and Chapel Hill and Raleigh and Durham and Charlotte. Um, it is a pretty unique route because of how different the schools are. Um, you have this eliteness from the UNC fans and their alums. You have this more engineer, blue collar uh, aspect from NC State fans. It's just perfect. And this is crazy. I mean, I was listening to y'all yesterday. Can't believe that, that NC State said eight wins uh, with the chance to get nine here. And I think it's just two programs in, in very different, had different, very different expectations of their season at this point. And, and now they're just looking at each other trying to get nine wins with, I think, I think a win for state would be an incredible season for them with how their season went. And, and UNC, like they need this to save the season. They need this win to kind of get back on track, hopefully get a, a bowl win and then potentially get to 10 wins because Mac has not won 10 wins at UNC. There's just a lot at stake for kind of perspective of UNC football for, for kind of how this Mac Brown era is going to go, how it potentially could end. And really the legacy of Drake May, too. So it's just a lot of interesting things. And Peyton Wilson, too. Gosh, Peyton Wilson committed to UNC. Um, and went to his high school like three times to cover him during his recruitment. And, and now he's, you know, he could take Drake May's head off on Saturday. And so that whole factor, too, is just there's a lot of hatred and a lot on the line. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's definitely not a national robbery, though. What do you think Carolina fans will look back at with Drake May? in these two years like what will they how will he be remembered is he better than sam howell is he above marquise williams uh where where do we where do we rank drake may in the uh the carolina quarterback pantheon if you will he's the most talented quarterback unc has ever had um and that they they kind of wasted Kind of like with Mr. Bisky, like that Mr. Bisky, I think had eight wins or maybe nine wins this year too. I mean, he was really good too, but they wasted the best quarterback they're going to have for the next, you know, 15, 20. He's a once in a 20, 30 year quarterback. Like who knows the next time they're going to have someone just as good as Drake and to have him follow Sam. What an incredible run of quarterbacks, but really they, the offensive line has been average with Drake on um, the run game. Really good this year. But the defense hasn't really carried their water this year either. And so you have this star quarterback who can make all the throws, who can, who can run the ball, kind of this, you know, this darling of college football, but they just haven't been able to, to win the, the games they need to do, do to get to like, to get to nine wins, get to 10 wins, get to 11 wins. I mean, losing to Virginia, losing Georgia Tech, um, it's, just, it's, it's tough, man. It's, it sucks. I mean, losing the Virginia loss, how it ended, and then following that with Georgia Tech. It just it defeated UNC fans. I mean, I've been uh, I've been covering UNC football and following them for you know what 10, 15 years, but some people have been watching UNC football their whole life, 40 years, 50 years. And uh, kind of they've seen this story happen. And now you have the guy. You have the guy who can win the big game, the guy who can make all the throws, the guy who can can run in touchdowns. And, and it's kind of the all right, well, we need to beat state to get to nine wins. Kind of the same story, but uh hey, you beat you beat NC State, you go to a bowl, 10-win season, 
um that's not awful i'll say that it's it's not awful and here's the thing ross sometimes i feel like ross has to like maybe we can define a role for ross on the podcast where he is a carolina fan avatar for us because i think you and i you know, because we went to state. We, we need we need Ross's input. I, I think yeah. he's I think he's upset he missed this year. Like I think a so lot too. of shit happened. A lot of shit happened here. I mean, the raising Ross cane, leaves it. The idiots. raising cane finally opened, and uh, Ross was on that Chapel Hill raising canes beat for a while. There was a line going down several blocks on Franklin Street. I miss Ross. Ross, I know you. I know you. Said <laughs> about that. I'm going to ask you this from a fan perspective. Do people want Mac Brown back next year? It's not about like should he retire, is he going to retire, whatever it is. Blah 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 blah. Do you think that there is a contingent of fans who are like Mac? Thank you, but it is time. Okay, a couple things. I went to Raising Canes on Sunday. I'm back in North Carolina, baby. Yes. Um, I went on Sunday. Uh, I'm in Greensboro right now. I was in Chapel Hill. I'm in Greensboro at my brother's house. Um, so I'm back for the week. Uh, this is an interesting question. I did a little message board perusing, as I like to do. Usually, you know, at 10, you know, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., I'll throw on the message board before I go to bed, and uh, <laughs> maybe up till 1 a.m. But um, it, it, it's split. It's split. I think everybody is aware that Mac Brown raised the floor of Carolina football um, and got him to a point where the expectation is nine wins. 10 wins. That's the expectation under Mac Brown. Um, and, he, and he's reached that. Um, maybe he hasn't gotten to that 10, 11 win point. There's also the point that he is 72 years old. And this is a young man's game. You look at Oregon with, with Dan Lanning. He's, mm -hmm. he's my age. He's 37 years old. Um, you look at programs oh, nice. who are high 40-year-olds. It's, it's NIL. It's transfer portal. It's this new age. And I think Mac Brown has adapted well to both of them. I don't think he... I don't think he's – Dabo Sweeney has ignored the uh, transfer portal. Mac Brown, we've been, uh, UNC's been taking 8, 10, 12 impact transfers, you know, the last couple of years. So I don't think it's really an issue of, like, he is stuck in the old times. Um, I think fans are upset with the defense and, and Gene Chizik and the fact you brought back a retread and the defense has not been good. The last, they've had sparks, but they've not been good overall last – two years um and i think they're upset with some of the coaching hires uh the defensive line has not lived up to expectations the whole thing was unc had four and five star defensive linemen in every class and they haven't been a four and five star off defensive line man i spoke to a defensive line the last two or three years um they've shown flashes this year against south carolina but he hasn't made the tough coaching decisions bringing back a lot of his friends to to, to run the show um, I think there's a lot of people who are upset with, with some of the moves behind the scenes. But I don't know if fans realize, like, who is going to be better than Mac Brown? That's the thing I hear from a lot of people that were there for Mac Brown at one point. Like, who are you going to bring in that is going to do everything Mac Brown does from a donor standpoint, from a um, CEO standpoint, from the connections he has across the comfortable landscape? Like, who is going to come in? And, and be that much better than Mac Brown will be at age 73 and, uh, in 2024. I mean, you're taking a risk. Mac Brown's a known commodity. He raises the floor. Um, he has, I think, he hasn't won the big game, and that's another big issue, too. He hasn't won the big game. This is a cool tidbit. I, I, I know Bubba Cunningham, and I've talked to him. And I don't think he'll, I don't think he'll mind him saying this, but I'm going to say it. I talked to him, uh, I think it was last year, two years ago. And we're just talking, I think it was before a Notre Dame game. And I was like, man, this is a big game. If Matt Brown wins this game. This is a big game for Matt Brown. If he wins this, it's kind of that signature win being Notre Dame. And I was like, man, what is the biggest win so far under Matt Brown? And Bubba looked at me and he goes, probably losing to Clemson in 2019 was the biggest win. It showed that the Tar Heels could compete with the number one team in the nation, Trevor Lawrence, take them to the brink, have a chance to win. At the end of the game, a two-point misconversion by Sam Howe. I think it was 21-20 was the final. And that, you might look at that as the biggest win under Mac Brown, and it's a loss. So they just haven't won the big game. I think oh, that upsets fans. We know you have Sam Howe and Drake May, and you can't go in, go in and win those big games you need to win to get to the next level of UNC football. 
Ross Martin. Hey, man, we appreciate it. Uh, nice to see you're back in North Carolina. Yes. I'm glad you got your chicken tendies because I know that you were on the beat for that for a long time. And uh, we'll talk to you later. I right, appreciate it, guys. Get out of here on our Thanksgiving Super Show with, with one Hey Joe question that comes from me. Okay. Big thanks to Anthony over at Oakwood Pizza Box. Anthony's going to get that job done, by the way, for Wes. Can have all the pizzas. You let me know if I got to deliver, man. I'm around. We're here. I'm not going anywhere for Thanksgiving. So I have, I have been requesting a Thanksgiving pizza. Oh, yeah. Saw this. I have been requesting. Unfortunately, I saw I've this. been requesting a Thanksgiving pizza. So shout out to one of our listeners who put this into our timeline on Instagram. And this is from the original Salpinos. And I don't know where exactly this is, um, but they've got a Thanksgiving pie. It's a twist on a holiday classic. Turkey gravy, sliced roast turkey breast, homemade sausage, and apple stuffing topped off with our famous cranberry sauce. Now, this is Thanksgiving. This is in uh, Deer Park, New York. Where is that, Joe? No idea. So not a single clue. I'm watching this. The gravy's going on the, oh my goodness. This is amazing. Turkey gravy on top of the top of the dough with some sort of base, a little extra on the sides. A little bit of the stuffing, stuffing is going on top of this gravy with the apple sausage stuffing. That actually sounds just good on its own. Yeah. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. Then the, the, the roasted turkey, turkey breast chopped up okay. to put on top of the stuffing. And then they're going to finish it off with this cranberry sauce, this famous cranberry sauce, which I'm intrigued. Now, I look, I'm a weirdo. I like the cranberry sauce that comes out of the can, the ocean spray yeah, with yeah. the ridges and it jiggles. That's yeah. my shit. Like, not going to lie. But what did he just put on He's the top? He's putting cheese on top of that now. Oh. Put it in the oven. Jeez. Yeah. You put, I mean, it's a pizza. You got to put some cheese on it. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Do you tell me you wouldn't eat that? Are you telling me you wouldn't eat that? That you looks put, amazing. Why the you? The cheese. He lost me with the cheese. Really? You don't put cheese on your Thanksgiving dinner, do you? But it's a... Pe oh, when you make a Thanksgiving leftover sandwich, do you not put cheese on it? No. Do you put mayonnaise on it? Yeah. See, I don't put mayonnaise on it. I just do... I go stuffing, cranberry, turkey, sometimes cheese. Not the world's biggest cranberry fan. I'm not going to lie to you. See, I think that the fresh cranberry sauce with like the actual cranberries yeah, homemade like the, stuff like that what they just what he just showed yeah like i feel like to to quote family guy it insists upon itself you have to have a little bit of trashiness with your thanksgiving meal and maybe it's how i grew up because my family was big on those uh tv the tv dinners remember when tv dinners were a big deal yeah you stick them in the oven i forgot with the hungry man back in the day so my dad was obsessed with those turkey Hungry Man from back and it the, had the and it had a little like was it dessert. frozen and you had to defrost it. No, you could put the whole thing in the oven. Oh, okay, you could put the whole thing in the not oven. the one that you like dropped in water. There was those two, but that's okay. not what I'm talking about. So I need Anthony. No, I need Anthony no. to make this. No, why won't he do it? No, you're telling me that he can't make a square pie. He can do whatever you with want with the gravy and the cranberry. Desecrate. That's not the desecration. <laughs> yes, it is. Come on, man. Like, you want a sandwich? Make a sandwich. These you want Thanksgiving? Have I Thanksgiving. Want, you know why? Why would you not combine? The we two? don't need to cross pollinate. Why not? That's the beauty of food. It's a fusion, Joe. It's a fusion. Look, they don't exist anymore, so it's not like I'm giving away competition yeah, for yeah. Anthony. But do you remember a, a place locally called Pie Works? Vaguely, they had one over in Waverly Place. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right now, by the movie theater. Yes, and I think there was another. I think there was a. There's pie a works. reason they're out of business, sir. I believe there was a Pie Works <laughs> over. They used to put anything on there, and it was great. I want to say there was another Pie Works pizza <laughs> on uh, Millbrook. It was like a Millbrook and Spring Forest, or that area when sure. Spring Forest Road's on its way out to Capitol Boulevard on Old Wake Forest Road. I want to say it's out there. I think it's, I think that air, there's a waffle house there. I think there's a, a car wash there now. Yeah. Anyway. I love it when you answer your own question before you even finish What's asking that? the question. What, what did I do? Like, why does this pizza place no longer exist? No. Because they decided to put a bunch of shit no. on their pizza Dude, instead had, of making actual no. real pizza. They had, they had a, <laughs> they had a loaded baked potato pizza. Oh God. It was they amazing. A, so they had a diabetes pizza. <laughs> Is what you're saying. <laughs> they put potato chips on there too? I would eat it. Oh, come on, Gumby's? Oh, man. Did you, did you never have like the stoner pizza at Gumby's when you were like shit faced at state? 
They put fries on that shit. What? Yes. You had the Gumby's Damn It, obviously, which was like I the had gigantic the Gumby's, size. The Pokey Sticks. But yeah, you can get the gigantic damn it size. The Pokey size Sticks the Pokey were always sticks. the ones that I got. Oh, Pokey Sticks always hit. I mean, I haven't had Pokey yeah. Sticks in a long time. That's probably a reason. Back in the day, Pokey Sticks hit. I, we went to, this is like potluck season. When we were young and I was lazy. Oh, and somebody, you brought the Pokey Sticks. There was a big holiday potluck oh, somewhere. That's, a, that's a great we, call. We were probably like 24, 25. So I thought, you know what would be funny? I'm rolling up with a gigantic box, box of Pokey Sticks. Now, guess, I, what, guess what the biggest hit We was. can ask Anthony to make a version of Pokey Sticks. Okay. That would be allowed because okay. that's pizza with cheese and no sauce. Okay. That's okay. But that's but, okay. But, but the thing is, the Pokey Sticks are a little puffier than... I'm, I'm sure he could figure it out, Joe. You think he can reverse engineer I, I, Pokey Sticks? I, I think he can, yes. But here's the other thing that he has to reverse engineer. We're not dipping in anything. Uh, we're not, we're not going to be ranch. There's no ranch involved. Marinara? Yes. Because they would come with marinara and ranch. And you knew Gumby's no, was... No ranch. You knew Gumby's was falling off when they started charging you 25 cents for, the for ranch. sauces. It's like, y'all, this used to be... Oh, the garlic butter? Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But here's the one thing Anthony cannot... Actually, we can replicate it at Oakwood Pizza Box. We have to be drunk to yeah. truly enjoy Done, the, the yeah, gummies. We're, we're in. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all I ask is for a Thanksgiving pie, man. No. Mm -mm. Why Some, is it such a else. problem? Somewhere else. It's like, it's. I mean, am I insulting your Italian roots? Yes. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be mad if somebody wanted to make a Cuban pie, like a like a Cuban sandwich pizza. What what item could you put on a Cuban sandwich where you would be like, that's not a Cuban sandwich? Salami. Okay. I just triggered some people from Tampa. Right. Anyway. What if I put <laughs> cucumber instead no. of pickle on Cuc the cucumber? Ow. On the oh, get out. <laughs> you have insulted my family. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Hit it. Oh uh, gosh. <laughs> I don't have it up. But happy Thanksgiving. And oh, oh, oh. Well, actually, I can pull it up because. I had let me let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Just play the play the last two seconds of my intro. No, you got no, it. no, 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 no. Wait, do you have the Happy Thanksgiving yeah. in the Law of the Wolf thing? Yeah. No. Here's what I'm gonna do because it's funny. Uh, I because I'll show I'll show you where it <laughs> that lives. That was very dismissive, by the way. No, 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 no. The no. Law of the Wolf thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> the Law of the Wolf thing. You, you have that that thing that, you know, that, that podcast. Thing. You still doing that podcast? There we go. So that is from our old 850 the buzz YouTube page. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put this up. This was from 15 years ago. I also, okay. I also need the it, it is labor day and we will labor. <laughs> okay. So, he had every holiday for us. This is a uh, this is a special Thanksgiving treat. Are you ready? Yeah. So <laughs> Here we go. If you ever get your Joes confused, just remember, I'm the one that hates your posse. Where are we at today, Joe? This is a new location. I'm holding coffee cups. Why do I We're sound in the like, basement hold, of on, hold on. Why do I sound like my balls haven't dropped? <laughs> I think that was an equipment issue. No, it was a... not an equipment. Look at you. What is... Yeah, We're at the morning times, by the way. So if you yeah. want to know our relationship with, with Greg at Empire Properties, it goes by... This is a 15-year-old video. <sighs> So when was this published, for heaven's sake? I don't even know when this thing was published. You see some old buzz babes from back in the day. Shout out to Chris Clark and all that stuff. But look, there's young Bomani from 15 years ago. Anyway. Son's ransom notice. I don't know where we are, to be perfectly honest. I see peeling. Why do you sound like that? I, I think it was. It was not an equipment issue. It's called yeah. We Were Babies. Well, that <laughs> feels like longer than 15 years. I'm not going to lie to you. No. <laughs> I don't even know how you found that. It's probably well, probably best that we don't. Yeah. Well, people can see the old. Um, again, this is the old eight fifty the buzz thing from back in the day. The last thing that's on there is a Woody's ribs contest that Bomani Jones hosted. That was the last thing that was on there from back that's in awesome. the day. Anyway, so there's your happy Thanksgiving treat, folks. You can see us babies Saturday back in the day. See you Saturday night. Yes, yeah, Saturday. Come see us. Breeze through. We'll, we'll rain be or shine, win or lose. After dark. It's not supposed to rain, but we will be there after dark. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And again, thanks to um, for all the listening and the subscriptions and the reviews and everything else. All, all jokes aside, we are truly thankful for that. Mm -hmm.